Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another live stream. And more importantly, welcome to the World Builder Contest 2023. Guys, we are going to be checking out some nice six player free for all maps today. And we're going to cast so you actually can see the players play. So we'll have some nice free for all matches and stuff. And at the same time, I'm going to be commenting on the maps here and there just a little bit to uh, give some advice to the new mappers that are going to join because of the World Builder Contest. So, yes, guys, if you missed it, then please, why? Come on. Why? why you miss these things, man. World Builder Contest, it's an amazing contest, an amazing opportunity as well uh, that comes around every year that is basically there that we can get really good maps, okay? Uh, we can get more people into mapping, get sort of the community more interested in mapping as well because it doesn't get much attention, but this thing, man, this annual contest really does shine a light on the mapping. So, guys, without further ado, I will show you the very nice... Um, teaser trailer or announcement trailer and uh yeah I'll, I'll do that first so let me first see if i can switch off the music here and here we go let's enjoy it together the community outpost proudly presents the world builder contest 2023 it's an annual mapping contest where professional mappers and first time mappers come together to create new maps for command and conquer generals zero hour Mappers will have 30 days to create their masterpieces, all while receiving feedback from well-known live streamers. This year, the prize pool for the contest is set at $1,000. The contest is free to enter and previous experience with map making is not necessary. All you need is to have the game installed and the motivation to try something new. Last year, we had 24 participants creating a total of 55 maps. Many of you will recognize these maps from recent tournaments and competitions. And that's because the winning maps get played. In fact, they get played a lot. This is because the winning maps are automatically added to the Genpatcher map pack, which is a map pack that has been downloaded over 35,000 times within the past year. But here's the thing, map making is not that hard. In fact, we have a tutorial all ready for you if you're willing to give it a shot. Also, this weekend, Sunday at 10.30 a.m. GMT, I, Legionnaire Generals, will have a live stream on my channel in which I'm going to make a map from start to finish. So make sure you have your game installed and join me while I cover the basics as well as some more advanced stuff. You'll also be able to ask me questions directly in the live chat about the contest or about map making or in case you run into any technical difficulties. So what type of maps are we looking for? We're looking for the three best six-player free-for-all maps and the three best five-player free-for-all maps. Each winning map will win the mapper $150. And as always, we will also be awarding a prize for the most beautiful map in the contest. This year, that prize is set to $100. Each mapper can submit a total of three five-player maps and three six-player maps. Each map that is then submitted is allowed a total of five further revisions. The maps will be graded on these five categories. These are map balance, creativity, texture quality, geometry, and sounds, with map balance being the most important. The maps will be graded by a panel of anonymous judges who are all experts in their field. You will also be allowed to use custom textures, audio, and models, but if you do intend to go down that route, please contact me in advance. And one final thing, maps don't need to have a working AI, so don't worry about that. It doesn't count to the final score. The contest is hosted by the Community Outpost, so make sure you go to the Discord, head over to the WBC 2023 sign-up channel, and sign yourself up by entering the command sign up and then your name. You can also sign up as a team working together with other mappers. The contest starts on the 28th of April and will continue until the 28th of May end of day. The first maps will either be looked at on Tuesday the 2nd of May or Friday the 5th of May, depending on how many maps have been submitted. We also highly suggest you check out the fine print in the Community Outpost Discord, so you can learn more about what we're looking for. This channel is filled with all the key points your map will be graded on, so it's definitely worth checking out. If you have any other questions, either about mapping, the contest or anything else, just ask away in the Discord and someone will be there to help you out. So there, now you know everything about the World Builder Contest 2023. Mappers, I salute you and good luck.
Well, that was a nice video summarizing basically everything you guys have to keep in mind. So uh, I know it's a little fast paced there telling you everything, but it is all there. So if you have any questions and stuff, just rewatch the video uh, or you can ask in the Discord. Um, but yes, ladies and gentlemen, the prize pool is absolutely insane, okay? It's $1,000 this time around. Last year, it was $250, okay? It went fourfold higher. It's absolutely insane. So you can actually win $150 if your map wins. And if, you're, if you have one map, right? Let's say you work on one map, and it's a really good map, and it wins but it's, uh, it's also the most beautiful map, then you actually get 250 bucks because you get $100 for the most beautiful map. So, you know, that's, that's pretty amazing. So uh, yeah, of course, I have to say this is only possible because we have some amazing sponsors this time around. Uh, I see one in the chat, that's Blazing G right there. Thank you very much. Um, there's also Entropy, there's CNCHD, Ahmad Sabora, Antipro, Tariq, and there's an anonymous um, sponsor as well. Uh, I hope I got everyone. Uh, because I'm kind of doing this off memory because, man, I had to sort out a lot of things today. <laughs> but anyway, let's, uh, let's let people join in and uh, let's do some casting, right? Some random free-for-all casts and uh, we can see what is an example of a good map, what is an example of a bad map. Okay, I wouldn't say bad. It's not, we're not going to cover any bad maps, but we are going to cover sort of weaknesses of certain maps. Let's put it that way. Um, and all sort of, so the mappers who are watching can be like, hmm, yeah, okay, I, I never considered it that way, um, because some of these maps are quite popular, you know, like uh, DEFCON, just saying. I mean, why don't we start with DEFCON, huh? DEFCON's a good one to start with. Um, so I'll uh, basically say why DEFCON is good and why DEFCON is bad, things like that. Uh, and of course, if you guys have any questions about the contest, just ask away in the live chat then uh, I can get back to you as well. And of course, most important of all, guys, I'm doing a bonus stream, okay? Sunday, all right? Sunday, that is uh, 12.30 for the people who live in Europe and uh, for everybody else who understands GMT, it's 10.30 a.m. GMT that uh, I'm going to start my stream on Sunday. And I'm basically, uh, all you need is just to have the game installed, uh, fire up World Builder and just kind of, you know, play along with what I'm doing. You know, you'll see me making a map and it'll be fun, it'll be, it'll be good. And uh, we'll cover some of the basics to get you started with map making. And then, of course, <clears throat> we'll venture into the darker area of, like, uh, more expert shit. But, you know, I, I, think, I think it'll be good. I think it'll be fun. Um, anyway, whoops. Let's go Observer. Uh, let's, leave, let's leave this as is. I also said no rules in the room because I want to make this clear, guys. The, uh, these maps are meant to be for... Um, tournaments and competitive situations, okay? So that's the idea behind it all. Uh, let me see, are we seven? Yeah, we should be seven. We are missing one person. Big Mason. But um, yeah, so that's the thing. Uh, we are looking for more maps that we can use in tournaments and competitions and things like that. So that's sort of one of the things behind this whole contest as well. It is, we're getting new maps, but we're also getting useful maps that can be used in tournaments. So we get a bit of variety. Like I did a poll not that long ago, uh, like a few weeks ago. And uh, I asked you guys, like, what would you like to see new like, or more of? Like, do you want more tournaments? Do you want more maps? And something like 30% of the people voted, I want to see new maps. So, you know, fair enough. I, I, can, I can understand. I can relate. So this is the kind of thing that's really going to help with that. But anyway, let's hop here into this very nice match. We are casting this match here, this DEFCON game. And uh, I've been hovering over this Air Force guy for a little while. It is Hippo as Air Force, who I have in my friends list. So he's probably a good guy and, uh, you know, trolling a little bit. And, oh, look at this Targaryen in the orange. He is uh, Air Force as well, right next to him. And then on the right here, we have Mazen as Stealth General. Up top here, we have Fury as Normal China. We have to the left of him, GGG as uh, Demolition. And on the top left, we have Benz as Super Weapon General. So let's see what is going to happen here. Uh, these players, these two, are most likely... I think they said they want a piece, right? Probably because they just don't feel like having that long, drawn-out battle that you would normally get. In fact, we even get a supply here. That is very much like, hey, man, we're piecing. So, uh, yeah. GGG says rules. It is no rules. Uh, I hope somebody remembers that it's no rules. And Hippo is disconnecting. That is uh, not good for Hippo. That is this guy. Uh, who I do have in my friends list, so I don't know what's going on there. And wait, he just left Game Ranger? 
He just left Game Ranger. Okay, Hippo has uh, has been removed. We can vote him. And uh, there we go. That is the fastest way to lose. <laughs> uh, Locomotive says, The maker of Spaceship Tournament better resubmit his map. Six-player version and balanced. Uh, you're talking about Zgor. Yeah, Zgor is a really good map maker as well. Um, I'm sure he's going to join. I'm, I'm, I'm not doubting whether he will join. I'm sure he will. He's very good. Uh, I haven't seen him on Discord yet, but pretty sure when he finds out World Builder Contest 2023 is uh, is live and running, he'll be like, okay, let's do this. And of course, looking forward to his uh, maps as well. But let's see, this does kind of make things a little easier here for Targaryen. Then again, we do see a Shinnok coming right away here from Benz. We've got a random uh, terrorist here. It's going to get potentially gunned down by these rangers. We don't see the capture building upgrade yet. And might just kill these rangers. Take it, green. Okay, so he's choosing to peace with the super weapon general by just saying, yeah, just take the island. Um, okay, he bugged, but he killed them. See what's happening here. Fury in some trouble. As a normal China. Is he dozer hunted? Not yet. He's got one dozer. But there's a, a network in progress. But uh, yeah, normally we complain in DEF CON about this base being really small, right? You can even see it on the minimap. If you compare, let's say, this one, look how big it is, right? Compared to this, it's, uh, what, maybe 40% smaller. If you do that in your own map where you have one player base that is a lot smaller than another, you're going to lose points on balance. That is one of the things with balance. Uh, Dr. Goldfish says the in-game sounds are a bit quiet. Is that so? It should be okay. But mind you, that's because I'm not selecting units and stuff, so... Like the oil capture, that's a loud sound. Like, how's that coming through? Is that a bit quiet? Because then I can uh, increase the volume. But I don't want it that when explosions happen, you guys can't hear me at all, you know? <laughs> there's, there's a level of that. See technical going around the edge here. Fury with his listening outpost has to make it work, but this is going to be tough, man. This is going to be tough. He's, uh, China really has uh, trouble trying to catch up with these fast units. Wait, did I just hear a hijacker? What just got hijacked? Oh, the last dozer! <laughs> oh, Mason dozer hunted Fury by taking his last dozer. Oh, so good, man. So good. Nice terror take there as well. So Fury's basically dead. He's, uh, he's screwed. Targaryen randomly says all mid, as though blue has all mid. Blue has nothing in mid. He has one tunnel network. That's it. Targaryen himself has, has more mid than, than blue. That's amazing. So, you know. Oh, that's a nice flame wall, though. Does it keep the RPGs alive? Looks like it. It is awfully laggy, though. I wonder who's, uh, who's lagging it. Uh, Goldfish says, yeah, it's on the quiet side. Would be nice if you could put a bit louder. Can't really hear anything. Okay, I can put a bit louder. Let me see if, uh, there, I put it a bit louder now. So tell me if, uh, if you notice a difference. Mind you, I think this also affects music. So I don't know if the music's going to be too loud. Just let me know and I can update it. No problem. But let's see. So even though you have the bottom island here and you have a smaller base, it's not that the game becomes unplayable and whatever. In fact, there's a reason DEFCON is still considered one of the best free-for-all maps, or at least mostly played free-for-all maps. And that's because the aggression. It's easy to be aggressive, it's easy to be defensive. You have your two oils in the back and you have a supply. So you have two sources of income, okay? Don't only put one supply. Don't only put two oils either. Don't, don't, don't do that. But it's good that you have this so you can sit in your base and build up a decently sized army and then go out and attack. At the same time, there is money basically around you and there's a very nice middle where there's a lot of money. So this is like an incentive for players to come to the middle and collect some cash. So that is something uh, to keep in mind when you make a map. Having that incentive for a player to go to the middle is, uh, is very nice. Fury actually doing pretty well here. Still too quiet. Nah, seriously? Okay, let's crank it up then. How's this? This is pretty loud now. Or is it that my mic is maybe louder? Because I uh, changed some mic settings. 
Could that be it? Is my mic loud? I could just reduce my mic a little. Let me do that. Because yes, I have been messing around with some settings because I had some issues. There. Maybe this is a bit better, the combination of the two. Alfred says, just tuned in. Leggy won't play tonight, right? No, I'm going to be casting some free-for-all games. I'm also checking out the maps, the good things, the bad things of the map. And uh, things like that. So, regarding DEFCON, you basically get the gist. There's money in the middle. There's, um, you know, something to go out of your base for. That's not just only killing a player. Still too quiet. Man, go away. How can it still be too quiet? Okay, how's this? Now I really cranked it. There's no game sound. There is. I can see it. It's transmitting the game sound. This might be uh, this might be an AV1 thing. There is game sound. Wait, are you guys serious? You don't hear any game sound. Let me double check here. There should be game sound. Um, but yes, I actually did update to the latest OBS Studio. Let me verify. It should work. Better, says Pret. Okay, so... What about the music? You can hear the music, right? TK Leo just said, I've submitted my first map for the contest. Are you serious? <laughs> oh my god, it has been, what, not even an hour? <laughs> You've already submitted a map? Alright, so now I'm cranking it to the max. Game audio, uh, game audio is now maxed. No sound on stream. Well, either you hear sound or you hear very little sound. It's one or the other. You can't have, you know... Some people saying no game sound. So you don't hear music. Okay, now there's no music, but you don't hear, like, the choppers. No game sound. Well, uh, I guess we're off to our first problem, right? Because I switched over to AV1 encoding, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, let me verify... Audio track one, it says it's using. So I just need to check something here. Um, it is it is broadcasting to audio track one, so it should work. Only your voice. Um, what about the video? When I was playing the when I was playing the video, we do hear. Sound is very, 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 very low. That is weird, man. That is bizarre. Let me double check. Maybe I can do something. Oh, I can boost it. I can boost the sound of the game, but... I'm a little confused a lot that I actually have to boost it. Okay, how about now? It's, uh, on my screen, it's saying it's almost as loud as my voice. Loco says he can hear the chopper. Okay. Huh. That is so bizarre. Well, that's the thing. I, uh, in order to do the AV1 encoding thing, I, uh, had to download the latest version of OBS Studio that's still technically not released. It's a release candidate, which means they're thinking of releasing it because, you know, they're they're kind of getting there. Um, so it's still sort of like beta. Okay, people saying it's better. Okay, all right, okay. No, the game, the game sound is fine. I can hear the music loud and clear. So uh, what I did is I just boosted the crap out of the sound for you guys, for the game. I just hope that, you know, it's not going to be a case where I restart the game and then suddenly you guys go, ah, because it'll be really loud and stuff. But we'll see. All right, thanks for letting me know. Uh, the video that I played back earlier, the, um, the announcement video, you guys heard that okay, right? I, I, I wouldn't mind if you can uh, confirm a little bit of feedback there. But yes, I'm uh, I'm getting distracted. You guys are distracting me. Let me uh, focus a bit more on um, what makes DEFCON good. So, you have three entrances into a base, right? Like, you always have three entrances. Uh, that's a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is you have three ways of attacking. So, if a guy is heavily bunkering this side, you can just push in from the side, which kind of opens up the way for the attacker. At the same time, there's only three entrances, so it's somewhat easier to defend. 
So the best type of defense in a map like this is with units. So for example, Humvees, all they need to do is if they're over here, right? Um, or like this guy, you know, he's sending his Humvees down. You can sort of quite easily defend all three entrances. Like if, uh, if Orange was here with his Humvees and he saw an attack coming from the right, he could just reposition his Humvees over here and he could defend quite nicely. So that's sort of like an advantage you have. The map is, your base is not too big that you can't do that. You can do that. Um, you have three ways in, so it's not always going to be a bunker fest. And, you know, it's it's like the right sizes as well. Uh, that's another thing I can tell you guys. If you're thinking of making a six-player map, look at existing six-player free-for-all maps that are popular, that people like, and look at the map sizes. Look at the base sizes, and then try and remake things like that. Ooh. So close, man. So close. But, uh, yeah, is Goldfish still in the chat? Because I saw him earlier. I'm sure he has... Oh, he still lost the Humvee anyway. But, um... I think he would have some things to say as well. Because he's been talking to me about six-player free-for-all maps. And he th he's like, no, man. they got to be totally different. But the thing is this. It's uh, it's not up to me. It's not up to anyone. It's, it's up to the judges who remain completely anonymous. So nobody knows who they are. Well, I mean, I know who they are. But, you know. I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to spoil that. But uh, they are they are good free-for-all players. Let's put it that way. Goldfish is here. Goldfish, do you have anything you want to add about what makes DEFCON good or bad? So the bad is obvious with the small island, right? The good is probably the three entrances, the fact that there's money in between the players that already sort of instigates potential, you know, attacking and curiosity, as well as money in the middle, uh, and that you actually have, like, two oils and a main supply. So you have a decent amount of income. You can build up a decent army before you go out and attack, right? I would say that that rounds it up quite nicely. I'll make here, Gasm says, basically a 300 by 300 is good for six player. I actually don't know what the map sizes are, to be honest. But uh, yeah, could be, could be. <laughs> you can just open uh, other maps in the world builder and just have a look. Oh man, Blue is doing really well here, actually. Uh, do you want me... Yeah, 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 come voice chat. Let's do voice chat. Okay, okay, let me uh, go in the voice chat. In the locked voice chat. Hello? Okay, I still have to wait for him to join. There is a slight stream delay, but even that, guys, because I'm on the new uh, codec, the stream delay should be seven seconds if you're watching at 1440p or 1080p. So if you're watching at 4K, then it's still the usual 30 seconds, but 1440p, which already looks great, it's only seven seconds. And hello, Dr. Gofish. Hello, hello. So what do you th what do you think of DEF CON, huh? What I think, um, there are a few things that you uh, knew about why it's a lot more fun than normal matches, I think. Mm -hmm. And why it's a lot more popular. First of all, you have the money. Okay, we all know it, the money is made, it's quite nice, the oil, the supplies. And you have a lot of, and you have a big base, so you can do whatever you want, you're a little bit safe, and you have three entries. So that is always nice. But the thing is, what I, uh, what I see wrong in some of the maps, um, what I suggest to a lot of map people, well, um, after, uh, last year, is actually um, make sure where your base position is based on answer response, so where your oil is, and where your money is, your supply crates or supply drops. Like place them more strategically and don't put them all the way in the back. Because on that point, it's nice in the middle. So you have your main base built in the middle, and you have the back of your base. You can actually uh, build up eco, build up money, whatever. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, uh, one sec. People are saying that you're very quiet. Let me do the same thing and boost the crap out of Discord as well. Uh, okay. I don't okay. know. I don't know why. I honestly don't know why this is happening um, randomly. Because I didn't actually touch my my audio settings in that regard. Like I touched the, my mic, but I didn't I didn't change any audio settings for oh, Discord. It's okay. the update, man. It's the update. We all know it. Okay. Now now it should be okay. good. Let me first ask them if they uh, can hear them hear me now. Yeah. I said a lot of stuff, but uh... you have to say Marco, and they have to say Polo. Marco. <laughs> now we have to wait. Seven, <laughs> but we only have to wait seven seconds, right? Because stream delay is better. This sound is good. Okay. Um, so a few things that I noticed about DEFCON, um, which I talked to you about as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so some of the map makers that asked me why DEFCON is a very popular map. And I actually thought about it. Um, when you take DEFCON, you have, first of all, your normal base, your normal supply and two oils. So you have a decent amount of eco. 
and it will actually force people to decide do i want to go oil do i want to go supply or do i want to go double supply to the side do i want to go to the middle so you already have that natural choice of you um going for for you having multiple options because you only have supplies it will only be supplies you will go for if you have too much oil you don't see too many supplies being made you see mass oil grab everyone will go for that oil but your middle will die out because if you have six oils in the middle nobody will go for the middle if everyone just like everyone will just send ranges but that's quite it so the middle will be quite empty and then you'll have that ma a magical base camping if you get what i mean yeah which i get what is, you mean which is one of those fun factors that actually is getting um thrown away and some armies will um have a little bit more advantage in some occasions some other thing is your base is nice in the middle you know, your base of Death Cult is nice in the middle of the base. You build your base at the supply, you put your, your more effective Your arrows, base your but... base is nicely in the middle of your base. No, what do where, you where, your, where your CC spawns yeah. is actually in the middle of the base. Oh, in it's the middle, in the middle of, like, of the, the base. island, right. Yeah, so it's not all the way in the back, because you have some maps where it's all the way in the back, you build up there. Uh, and when you start to build markets, money, or more war factory, everything becomes in your way. Everything is in the way, you are... Lacking space in a way because of the way you build the base. I see. So, be smart about that. Be smart where you place the supplies and where you place the starting command center. You don't want it to be in the back, otherwise, you don't want your CC in the back, otherwise, your dozer might be way too late to go to the middle of the workers and you will see the middle will just die out. So, it's all of the small things, you know? So, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's have some fun with this. If you had to rate DEFCON out of 10, how fun it is. How, how fun would you say the map is to play? Right now, compared to all the other maps, I would say a 9, man. A 9? Okay. Damn. That is, For, uh, that is nice. If I, can, if I compare it to the other maps, I still prefer DEFCON. Um, because of the way the map is placed, you have three entrances. You have a lot of space to work with to build up. You have a lot of options to go for at the beginning of a game. And the middle is quite big and open and there's it is worth going for. Yeah, that is actually one thing I want to say as well. Um, guys, when you make your maps, don't try and make it all like bunkery and stuff and surround everything with mountains and water and whatever. Um, we, we like having like an open field that we can send a massive army through. Um, and that sort of opens up the way of like, well, this kind of gameplay, you have a big Humvee army and you can move it around without mountains being in the way or random rivers you have to drive around. It's nice to be able to have that control as a player. Also, one thing, um, DEFCON is very nice and clear. You know what's going on, you know what the bases are, you know where the mountains are, where the cliffs are. You see the different areas of where you can go, where you cannot go. And what is accessible or not. Make that clear in your map, please. Yes. I don't want a map where I think, is that a mountain? Yes, that's is true. That, is that an edge? No? I, like, make that nice and clear. And you can have decorations, all that stuff. You can have trees, you can have that all. Just make sure that the major things, like the oil, like the supplies, and the entrances to each base is nice and clear. So, now comes the real question. Uh, if you had to rate DEFCON... Uh, with regards to how balanced it is, how would you rate it? Um, if no rules in mind, considering everything, so we know there's like an extra random uh, small supply pile and like the northern bunch of the small supply pile. There's just a random extra one. Okay, uh, we know that it, some bunkers can hit the oils, but others it, they can't. It's actually quite difficult to rate a map because um, the thing is there are multiple factors. Um. Which still uh, changes it. One major thing is actually the way your base is placed. What you have on DEFCON, which is very difficult to do on a map to make 100% balance, is the edge of the map. Before you, before I discuss anything, the edge of the map is is important. The edge. The edge on the map is all. No air units can go there. Nothing can go in the back of your base. It's black, it's at the edge of the map, which is almost impossible to do on a fully balanced map. But this allows for air force and infantry and all these armies to be a little bit more balanced to each other, because there's no sneaky Comanches that go in the fog of war, kill everything in your base. Ah, I get what you mean. So because, because, all right, so what you're saying is it's not, DEFCON is not like an island, a round, perfectly round island. So if you look at Coral Islands, 
uh, which we'll cover as well. Uh, basically, the, the whole battlefield, let's call it that, so the whole playable area, is surrounded by the sea. And you're saying you can use the sea to hide stealth Comanche and stuff. That's what you're saying. Yeah, you can attack from all directions. Um, so you have place closer to the edge, where there's almost no area to go from, and place place outside the edge. It's, it's the way of getting air units in your base as well. It's also majorly important to keep that uh, keep an eye on that. Um, yeah. Same is with the, with the command set. If you put it all the way at the edge of the map, or the supply all the way at the edge of the map, Air Force once again will have a bigger advantage. True. Just like that. You all have to consider. Well, but in it's, general, it's Death a valid Pro point. Is, an actually decently balanced map. Yeah, but out of ten, say. out of ten, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a hard time. Come on, out of ten. Ah, uh, seven and a half. Seven and a half on balance. Okay, you heard it, folks. Seven and a half. I, uh, I think that's a pretty accurate description. I, I don't think I would differ that much with uh, my rating on, on the map regarding fun, regarding balance. Um, I do play the map more because everybody plays it and it's just easier to get games. There is a level of that. Uh, so I never has the map already. Yeah, I wouldn't rate the map a 9 regarding fun. Um, I would maybe give it an 8, 8.5, something like that. Um, I mean, the thing is, I rated it because of the, uh, all the existing maps we have that, um, let's say, uh, make a map that completely changes the way the game is played how fun it is. Let's say you make a map that's actually maybe a 30 worth of point. I mean, it is... Of the existing maps, I have to rate it a 9, because um, it's actually a lot of fun, a lot re it's decently balanced. Uh, you have that fun factor of, you can build your base up, you don't have to worry about stealth units in your base, you don't have to worry about stuff um, coming in, Comanches, Lixus, you know. In my opinion, I, I know I'm going to sound biased, but I actually like my own map more um, Instant Shock Arena. I really enjoy that one when I play it because I feel like there's so many different things you can do. You can go heavy for the oil or heavy like for the conquest and just taking out players, getting islands. Uh, personally, I really think that map is fun and I prefer it over Defcon. Uh, the only problem is, yeah, you, you often have to transfer or, you know, people might not have the best PC, so it lags a little bit from time to time. Also, there are a few extra things. It's uh, sometimes difficult to see uh, what is middle? Like, if you don't have a radar, you scroll around the map. It's actually difficult to find your own base. Something you have to keep in mind on as well. Find your own is... base. Just press H. No, what I mean is, let's say you have a you have a base. The entire map has the same um, textures and everything looks the same. There's no clear interference between what is middle, what is your base, when you just look around without a radar van. Yes. Okay. I, you, you I, get, get, I get what you that. mean. I get what you mean. So guys, you see how <laughs> you see how you have grass here, literally in the box that I drew. Wait, is that a Moab? Oh shit! <laughs> yes, that's a Moab. <laughs> oh, glad oh. I caught that. <laughs> uh, Leggy like talking about maps and stuff. Uh, no, but like how you have this grass patch here, like literally in the box. If you turn everything into that grass patch, it starts to blend together. But here you have like different colors and stuff, and it does kind of help you realize like hey this is a different area sort of um trust me it does kind of show like how you can see the middle clearly this is the middle uh it feels different when you scroll over it real quick you know this is like a different section different area of the map that is something you can achieve with texturing and guys if you do this kind of stuff within your maps with texturing you're gonna get a really high texture score because that kind of stuff is nice to see don't just come up with a nice combination of grass textures and cover your entire map in just those grass textures uh, that is not a good idea. Ooh, particle cannon. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, mismatch. Oh. Yeah, that's uh, that's we a pity. We don't like that. Well, at least I called that Moab though. <laughs> so that was a nice Moab. Uh, true, true. That was a real nice Moab. But I guess we did kind of cover uh, Defcon here, right? What do you what do you think? Um, mostly, yeah. Yeah, so um, I do want to go check out Coral Islands as well, so the ranked version. Uh, also, guys, I'm reading all your comments. Um, I love Esmagoli, who's like, Defcon is basically Dust 2. Yes, it's it's Dust 2. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's one of those things you just well, can't shake. Everybody does it. Everybody knows it. Uh, uh, funny. All right, let's... Uh, Let's do it. Let me actually open the map myself as well, so I can uh, yeah. give you full feedback on it. Oh, wait, yeah. I removed it. 
because Goldfish has a lot to say about Coral Islands. Now, those of you who aren't sure what Coral Islands is, it's the winner of the very first World Builder Contest because uh, World Builder Contest 2020 was the first time we did it. Uh, and we actually started, with, uh, started it with six player maps and five player maps, literally the same as now. Okay. Um, so this was like the first batch, the first everything. And we got some really nice maps from it. And I like, I like Coral Islands. I think it's cool. But Fish, he no likey. So again, <laughs> we're just going to get his point of view. That doesn't mean that what he says is law. You can disagree. Players can disagree. You know, we're all just giving our opinions. But at the end of the day, it's all meant as like food for thought. You know, it's up to you what you decide to do with the information. Uh, Coral Islands. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Let's go. Coral Islands, what a map. The nice map, don't get me wrong. I like it. It needs it need some improvements. I think, I think there's one thing, though, about this map, and that is that Air Force is truly overpowered because it's relatively easy to just build a few fire bases and defend everything um, and then just kind of build up a load of stealth Comanche and just ruin everybody's day. True. But anyway, let me, uh, let me introduce the armies here so we know what we have. So we have... In the purple color, we have Jaff, and he is normal China. <laughs> then we have GLA Stealth General here for Benz. Then yellow, we have a gent as Super Weapon General, who might just have a bit of a good time on this map, because he's next to Fury, who's a tank general, who's not going to have a good time on this map, probably. Uh, Nuke General in the pink here is Mason, And then we have Targaryen as Infantry General. So uh, based on those armies, Fish, who do you think is most screwed? Like... You think Super Weapon General has an advantage on this map? Um, let me see what army is the most screwed. I would say I might even say Nuke. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't see many China wins on this map though. Generally. The thing is, air units on this map is key. In case you don't know, air units on this map is key. There's so much water, you can go anywhere you want, very fast, and you can attack from all directions. So air units is key. Makes. Raptors, um, um, helixes, combat nukes are key. They are gonna win you most, okay. of, most of the time. Okay, so here's a question. So if you have like the, let's say you're at the middle of the map, you see the money in the middle and then you scroll all the way to the left, right? Uh, you can see yeah. where that oil is and then you can see the beach and there's still some water. Are you implying there should not be water here? Are you implying the whole map should have just been shrunk down so that the map border is literally where the beach starts? Not exactly. Okay. There. If you change the map, like the map border, some players will have more advantage than other players depending on where they spawn. Because you have to make sure that all players have equally amount of space between you and the Fog of War. Um, otherwise, one, one, one spot will have Comanches in the back, can't have Comanches back, the other spot will not be yeah. able to get Comanches in the back. Yeah. Which is the major issue, you cannot have that. True. Well, um, just about uh, one thing I was saying earlier, like if you just defend off your entrances, you're, you're kind of safe here. So if you look here at the Super Weapon General, he's getting three EMP Patriots, right? Uh, he's getting a War Factory up. It's no rules. He can literally just say, screw it, I'm just going to get Auroras. And it's going to be hard to get in here. Like, what are your thoughts on that? True, it is hard to get in there, but uh, it's three entrances. They're quite big. They're quite, um, quite big, so... You have a lot of space to go around. You also have that little pathway in between uh, you and the enemy, or yeah. allowing other players yes. to get through it. Um, so you can get attacked from all directions by one player. Well, and you can get attacked from the back as well. Y you yeah, sort of. Um, so uh, let's see what Fury is going to do here, because he's tank general, <laughs> and he's literally <laughs> against... Wait, how's Fury in the... Oh, Fury joined. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me... Let me, let me... Wait, you have access? Yes. Okay. When? There. <laughs> I got rid of it. No, because I don't want to. I don't want to snake too much, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but basically, let's see how Fury is going to handle this. So, uh, the super weapon general is making clear that he wants the bunker. So probably he's thinking, let me get maybe one or two Humvees and then transition into Auroras. So that puts pressure on Fury here as tank general. He's going to try and push. He is actually destroying the EMP, and he does have a decent sized army. He will get through. I think he'll make it, yeah. I don't think uh, Yellow has actually much left. No, he doesn't really have a chance against the tank, Gerald. No. no Fury played it like right. This, when you don't have an army, it's going to be difficult. That's the issue with building up Patriots at all sides. You don't have an army to defend yourself with. 
Targaryen, in fact, going for a helix against the nuke general. You called it. You said air units reign supreme. Well, that is going to be the end of the nuke general here. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> so, um, what would you say would be like? What would change what this I... map around? Let's put it that way. In your opinion. First, first thing is actually move the command center and the supply dock a little bit more to the middle. To the middle. You want to know why? But not in the middle, but more to the middle. Yeah, so, um, so where this missile defender is standing, that's where the CC should be instead of over here. Something like that. Uh, the reason why I'm, I'm saying that is, right now, if you have your main base, your first supply will be close at the water, and you will most likely build around it very closely to the water. Already giving um, players more advantage, uh, more like the thing of, oh, let me build back. Let me build in the back of the base, I'm all the way at the edge. I will build up my base, and you see that base compact uh, very close to that edge of the water. Already giving air units more like, oh, I free buildings here to kill. Uh -huh. That is one. The second thing is, if your command set is a little bit more to the middle, same with that supply dock, you most likely will go for double supply or will go more to the middle. I see. Well, it's an interesting uh, point of view. I think you're right, because the base is basically set up to be really close along the edge. So a Lix flying in would completely destroy you. Like, if you look at this here, this base, if a, if a Helix came in from the side, I mean, okay, let's just forget about that. He's infantry, right? Uh, you could just take out the supply, which is one of the most important structures when you're playing. You need to have a supply. You need to have that income. So if that gets taken out, that's very painful. And then you probably can kill one or two production buildings. So, yeah, I think you're right on that. that, that that's the major thing, okay? But... Of things more closer to the middle you already have that more like feeling i have to go a little bit more for the middle you see two uh, two supplies being made more often and we also see um that base more in the middle being produced instead of at the edge of the map so the edge of the map is still there for production purposes like uh secondary eco purposes um which is a little bit more later in the game because at the start of the game you don't want um your supplies to be on the danger of getting destroyed without you being able to defend it at all because you don't have a space to go with your air units, uh, with your tanks, to, to kill that leaks, you know? Um, so if that supply is already close to the middle, I feel it'd be more easy. Fair enough. So, uh, it's something you might not think about when making a map, but I suggest giving it a big um, look at where your command and supplies are actually located at. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a fair point. Guess it makes sense. Brutals, also, yeah? Um, on the map like this, you, you see how much oil there is. You see already have um, six oils at the edge and six more oils in the middle. What I suggest doing is you either um, remove some of the oils in the middle or the oils in between. I would suggest oils in the middle, like reduce them or remove them entirely and change them with supplies. Yeah. So that is something um, that Goldfish and I were we were discussing not that long ago. Uh, if you place down supplies, that actually is a bit of an incentive for someone to, you know, create a bit of a foothold there. So for GLAs, they'll be quick to build a, a tunnel and stuff. But if it's just oils, people send one Ranger, one Red Guard, one Rebel, and they just kind of forget about it. Um, but if you have supplies, people are more likely to defend it. So you get a more natural progression of the player spreading out over the map. So there is that as well. So don't always just go for oils because it's easy. Don't put a map with like just oils and you have one base supply. Don't do that. Uh, you need to think like, how do we want the player to expand? How does it make sense? So um, let me let me just say, because I know what you're going to say about the oils. Um, Goldfish <laughs> worked on a, on a change in the map where he replaced these oils with supplies. Or actually, was it B Legacy or both? Um, uh, I suggested it be Legacy did it. Yeah, so you have some supplies here. He placed them here. And as a result, you know, when you have your supply here, the odds of moving forward and then taking the supplies over here is a lot higher. So you actually get some movement happening as opposed to staying in the back of your base, building up, maybe fortifying the edges and things like that. So that helps with the fun factor, making things more interesting. And look at this. This is exactly what Goldfish was saying. Lix is coming in from the back. Prop center, <laughs> easy kill. Like... It's so easy to take out so much at this point. This, this, this it's very difficult to defend against Lixes. Yeah. When your entire base is at the edge of the map, at the edge of the water. 
So that is uh... so here you go. This is literally what Goldfish is saying. You're seeing it happen, and that's why I wanted to do this casting thing so you could see the players play. And let's be honest, Targaryen. This is just three licks as he's coming in. He's killing an entire player. Well, okay, maybe not killing an entire player because he's not evacuating into. Ah, he still has. Uh, let's see. Jaff is level two, so there's no carpet bomb coming. So, Purple mo will take a serious hit from this, though. And Targaryen is level three. And he could take out a load of buildings here, get a lot of XP going. Uh, Bruno's for fun says, Can Gen Patcher fix the issue with. What was it? Direct, uh, X. direct X. Yes, yes, it can. So, just uh, download Gen Patcher. Click apply fixes and it should uh, basically fix it. But yeah, so there you go, guys. You can literally see the feedback. And this is what's so important, having feedback. Because as a mapper, you know, there's just going to be some gameplay situations you don't realize. And this applies to everyone, every single person. That's why uh, we have this contest as well. That's why we play the maps. Uh, I know TK Leo sent his. And ooh, got a nice donation there. Leggy sing Let It Go from Frozen. No! <laughs> no I'm not gonna sing! <laughs> oh, go away! Uh, <laughs> uh, so I love it. Even when I don't suggest it, they do it. <laughs> no, AJ, Simon, I'm not gonna do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you want, I can refund you. I'm not gonna do it. Oh, man. Yeah. That was funny. But here you go. GG from Jaff. So, Targaryen with the three licks he did it, man. He did it. So... Um, Feedback is useful. Feedback is good. It is very useful. You already make so much difference on the map. I, um, me and B Legacy, uh, what we did to Coral Islands, we have a version of Coral Islands. Um, I played a few times. Uh, we actually have two oils in the base. Those are a little bit more closer to the water. And the supply is more um, further in the base. You only have one supply. Though. You don't have the supply piles in your base. And we removed all the oils in the middle. We changed them to supply piles and we made, add the two supply docks in the middle. What it did, and, and everything else was like mostly the same. What it created was actually, um, you, you literally saw people really fighting over the middle. You have, you see big bases being built more to the middle. The edge of the map is, is getting clearer. It's getting a little bit more empty in a way. Um, you already have the nice expansion going on. Uh, you have the oil grab for the oils in your base, so it's actually worth going for it. And now you can get these two oils next to you um, as a bonus in case you can get them. You already have that nice incentive. Yes, you can go for four oils. Surely China can go for uh, maybe four oils or maybe you can go for the middle for extra money. You already have the nice expansion going on, which is very nice and a lot more fun. Um, so, yeah. Well, well ma many changes can be made. Overall, I still think this is a, a good map, and it was one of the best maps that got released in the uh, 2020 World Building Contest, and I still think it's really good. True. But at the same time, you can see literally Goldfish is saying, yeah, if you have it close to the water, you know, it kind of becomes a problem when Lixis or Comanche come in. Three Lixis come in and just kill the player. So, <laughs> you know, that's the thing. We are trying our best with this competition as well to sort of help create cool, great, nice new maps. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's going to happen. The The interest so far has been way higher than in previous years. Like we already have, I think, over 10 people who signed up. And uh, the announcement just went out like, I don't know, two hours ago. And uh, yeah, so I, I really wonder what's going to happen. We're going to have a lot of good maps by the end of this competition. I can tell you that. Yeah, and I'm even trying to make my own map. So let's see how that goes. Let's see. I, uh, I did notice that uh, Green positioned all his quads in a nice semicircle here, um, <laughs> which was which was nice. And uh, at this, actually, I'm just realizing he is stealth general, right? Isn't he stealth? Yeah, he is stealth. Um, but he doesn't actually have that much anti-air. So if he get, if he loses his quads, like I don't know if he's got anything in his tunnel. But again, if he loses his quads and Lix has come flying in again, you know. And Fury, in the meantime, is just forced to build land units. So he's just kind of screwed here. He's getting a nuke. It is no rules. So fair enough. You can you can do that. 
It's definitely not a bad idea as well to go for a uh, nuke silo when you're tank general because it's going to be relatively easy to defend. So remember what I said about DEFCON, that you have like large, empty stretches of land. Over here, you don't really have that as much because you still have an oil here and a few buildings and a few mountains, right? So like this, this army here, if it wants to move down below over here, let's say, you still have these little mountains in the way, so it's a bit annoying. Just a little bit. It's not like, oh, this map will lose so many points. Oh my god. No, it's not that. But it is something that's like there. It does give Fury an advantage at this point because it makes it easier for him to defend because he just kind of has to close off this section or this section or this section or just this section. Uh, so he can keep his army very defensively here while he just builds up super weapons. So there is a slight element of the ability to bunker in this map, which I think is less so in some of the other maps. True. I also see some comments about USA balance. Um, the thing about USA balance is oil is, of course, very nice for USA. Um, but when it's too much oil, USA becomes too strong, too fast. And it can snowball everyone. It can snowball any jewelry in China. It's very easy, very fast. So already, you can have oils, you can have supplies. Just make sure that uh, you have a combination of both, which benefits a little bit of USA. So USA can still go for oils and don't have to go supplies in the middle because you still have the Chinooks having to collect and can be shot down from very far away. So placements always built with place your supplies is also key for USA players because you don't want a, a 2 LA player from the other side of the map be able to shoot that Comanche out of the air in the middle um, just because the way the supply is placed. You don't want that either. Yeah. So you have to be smart about that. I'm uh, noticing Fury's playing this very well. He's uh, bunkering up. He's getting a load of Gatling cannons to be like, uh, hey, no Lixis, please. Uh, he's getting <laughs> some hackers up, and he's definitely going for the late game, which is tank in general. It's pretty tough to do, uh, but it's still it's still possible. Um, so he is, he is doing this right, I think. He's doing this uh, very nicely. Uh, the infantry general here... I don't know. I'm getting a mixed feeling here. Like, he still wants to go in and attack. He's still building units and stuff. And the GLA uh, is just slowly but surely expanding. I think the infantry general is uh, making too much army and too little eco. Yeah, I think so too. Also, hey, Homer, how are you doing, man? Uh, no, I'm not drinking. I, I ran out of beer. <laughs> I ran out of beer, unfortunately. So, you know, pro rules, right? No, it's no rules. No, it's no rules. Oh God, Fury! I know you're listening. Just tell him no rules, please. Don't don't snake. Don't snake. <laughs> I know you're listening. <laughs> because I know he's listening. I know he is. I know he is. He'll be like, no man, I'm not. But <laughs> also, one extra thing: um, if you make a map like Coral Islands with lots of water, don't make the water too much. Because um, the bigger the map, the more likely the map will lag, or and the longer the planes will take, your promotion will take to actually reach the map. So let's say you want to use an A tank because your base is getting attacked or a sneak attack, you want to use it. Make sure that the A 10 actually comes in decently fast and doesn't take like a minute outside the map because that can actually happen. We have seen it on, on some maps. Yes. Um, not on this one though. This one's not too bad, but there have been maps, especially when we were testing them, that somebody would just like, they would play it safe. So they would select a huge map and then they would just build like an island, like what you're seeing, like Coral Islands. But then the map borders essentially would be so massive, like the, the non-playable area, that if you call in a carpet bomber, he has to come all the way from the other side of the world sort of a thing. And it just, you know, that's, that's not nice for players because they use things like carpet bombers, um, you know, players time that. Like, I very much time that. And, uh, ooh, hello. Ooh. So you have, like, a, a border you can get into World Builder, which is actually not visible from inside the map. Um, if you make that too long as well, the planes will also yeah. come from that area. Yeah. It will take, like, five minutes before they actually enter the map. So I would push for 50 or 30 um, things outside the map, but no longer. Yeah, so leave that with a default border size. Okay, don't don't change with the when you click new map and it says border size. I think the default one is 32. I'm not 100 percent sure. Wait, let me check. I don't care, Leggy. He says okay, um, but you don't yeah. mess with that. Don't touch that. Don't change it. It's gonna be a nightmare for you to fix. Don't touch it. Like create new map, leave it default, um, because otherwise people will complain. 30, yeah. Because we've seen uh, people who put that on zero, we've seen people who put that on a hundred, and it's just no, don't don't touch that. It messes yeah. things up. Also, I I'm see Gore in the chat. Welcome, my friend. 
on Defcon, it's, it is, I think it actually is zero. Yeah, but Defcon's already uh, broken with the map border. Lol, True. both lotuses, but this one survived uh, the napalm. <laughs> that's the thing on Defcon is your promotion are instantly there. Also, what is going on with the tanks? <laughs> yeah, so um, Aqua says 30, question mark. Okay, so basically you see how this kind of fades out, this bit of water, right? And then it's just black. Uh, basically, there is actually land over here in the black section that you can't see. Uh, that is what's referred to as the map border. And for some reason, I don't know why, EA, in their wisdom, was like, yeah, we'll just let people edit the size of this black portion. Why not? Um, and that's sort of like a bit of a problem because some people just edit it and you just don't touch it, just don't touch it because the default value is what everyone is used to. So if you suddenly have something else, then a carpet bomber that starts literally outside the map, then it takes really long and stuff. Just just don't touch that. That's that's probably the best way to do it. Ooh. Yes. Fury might be in some trouble. So let me get this straight. Nobody's realizing it's no rules and Fury knows it's no rules because he's hearing us talk. So. Everybody's like, lol, he's gonna sell his nuke, and then he's gonna launch his nuke, and then everybody's gonna be like, holy shit. Or if you played it smart, he's tank. Makes believe um, everyone at his pro rules to give himself a better shot. Yeah, sounds like Fury. Fury would do that. Fury would do that, indeed. <laughs> he's sending an arty barrage, but he's actually cleaned it up quite nicely there. Oh, he still gets the bus, though. That's a nice hit. Army of Lixes here. Also, one extra thing on this map is at some pl you have uh, the mountain in between the place with some water and at some mountains. Yeah. Some at some places buggies uh, can actually shoot over them. At some places they cannot. So already yeah. small differences. I mean, most people will notice, but uh... yeah. In fact, I think if a buggy stands right here, right here, he can shoot at this hut, um, or eh, maybe. No, probably not. But you can still shoot across the water, so there, there is that. Red is saying pro rules. It is no rules. It is no rules, guys. I'm terribly sorry. It's uh... so decide where you want water or where you want mountains. Yeah. It's actually a very big difference or change. Um, because if you have mountains, it's a little bit more secure, and, and units like Humvees, buggies cannot really fire over them. While new cannons, scratch launchers still can. So, in a way, at some places you want that, at some places you, you actually don't want that. So, it's it's in a way you uh, make the map, decide the map, how, how it looks and how it plays. But it's a key difference to keep in mind. One thing I would suggest is if you have, if you want to make something like this, like an obstacle between players, just leave it as a mountain. Don't, don't put water, don't mix it, just put a mountain because... Uh, that keeps things nice and fresh because a GLA can send a combat bike or a USA can send a Burton over it. Uh, that's always a fun game mechanic to have, you know? If you make it water, then only air units can go over it, so, you know. I mean, in the middle, I would actually sometimes change water, uh, amounts to water, just for the buggies to be able to fire over them. Oh if a map is a little God. bit too laggy, I mean, too bunkery, you can change a mountain into water, so actually units can fire over them, becoming less bunkery. Uh, Esmagoli says, what do you think about a six-player version of Liquid Gold? Uh, <laughs> you're talking about the 1v1 map, like why not make a six-player version of that? Um, probably would not be a good idea. See, the thing is, when it's 1v1, I think some things you can sort of forget about and be a bit more casual about, uh, like oils and supplies, I would think. But in free-for-all, when there's a load of other players as well, one army will probably benefit a lot more than the other armies. So, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. I, w I wouldn't literally take a map and just cover it in oil lyrics. Um, I think we can have a look at Naval Port Reyes next. That one actually has a lot of oils. Um, and, and I've we have actually... Two versions of it. Yes, and I've actually made a change to it as well. So I want to show both, uh, both situations. So one, which is the one that everyone's used to. Or actually, you know what? I know what... Uh, Shall we, which version shall I show? Shall I show version the ranked one or the non-ranked one? Let's do the non-ranked one first. And then I'll show my oh. version afterwards. What do you think? Yeah, there are even three versions of it. I even forgot. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, first show the, uh, the, the ranked um, and then show your version. I think that will be good. Yeah, I show the ranked. Because the... Yeah, I mean 
The, the ranked version uh, of Naval Port Reyes actually should never have been ranked, unfortunately. Um, it was actually True. an old version. So when they were ranking, like choosing what maps to add to Gentle, um, the wrong version was actually sent to Tsetsom, um or whoever was in charge at the time. So they actually put an old version and called it the ranked version. Um, and the reason for that is that the map just had too much money and could be absolutely exploited such that non-USA players could just completely bork out the game. Uh, for those of you who've uh, seen me play on that map, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now I will uh, talk about it as well. Uh, TK Leo says, can you review Volcano Revenge as well? Yeah, I think I can do that. Hey, that's um, a good map as well. Actually, let me make a list of all the maps I definitely want to check out. And also, also, guys, great news. This just in. Score just now signed up. Okay, so Score was the guy who made Ancient Keep Balanced. Um, he made that map last year that won the most beautiful. No, that wasn't even last spaceship. year. That spaceship. Was, he made Tournament Spaceship, which also won beautiful. He's won, he's won it every time, hasn't he? I think he does. Yeah. So last year he did Tournament Spaceship, which won. Uh, that one came really close to actually winning. Uh, whoa, that was a nice mix strike. Uh, that came really close to winning, not just on beauty, but even on, you know, balance, whatever. It came close. But, you know, he, he couldn't fix the balance issues that the map had or he didn't want to because he's like, no, the aesthetic will just go to shit and I don't want to do that. Um, so it came really close. But he won the most beautiful map. That mapper just signed up. And the year before, so in 2021, he also won the most beautiful map. So, you know, it's going to be good, guys. It's going to be good. Yeah, I remember it's not only the, pl the map makers that are leveling up. It's yep. also the judges which judge on more interesting stuff in a little bit way. Like... In the way of balance, we always check out what is even more balanced, what we can do to balance it out a little bit more or have it, have it a little bit more fun. Because we have many maps that were very nice, very good looking. Um, that was either lacking a little bit of fun factor or a little bit of balance. And now they died a little bit out. There are some maps that actually died out, sadly, um, which looks very good, which, which even won, I think, some prize money. Um, but one of the two was missing. So even I think the judges will actually keep an eye on that a little bit more. To make but, sure that all maps that win will actually be played a lot more because how, how fun it is. Yeah, another thing about this competition is um, it's about six player maps and five player maps. Uh, now the reason it's six and five is because six player maps, we have some, we have some good ones like Coral Islands, but we could do with some more, you know? And the great thing about six player maps is that they can also be played for 3v3 and 2v2v2. So they actually have a bit more purpose to them as well. Uh, five player maps, in my opinion, the ones that there are are not that great. Um, and there's basically just Volcano, uh, what was it? Volcano Rush. Yeah, Volcano Rush, I think is good as a five player, but even that, I think there's a lot of room for improvement for the five player maps. So there's a lot of opportunity there because I suspect a lot of the mappers will go for six player maps. So guys, if you want to make that prize money, go for a five player map because there will probably be less competition. True, true. It will be interesting to see the, the new maps being created though. Oh, for sure. Uh, Sam says, who's going to judge? Yeah, so the judges are anonymous. Um, we're not going to reveal who the judges are. The reason for that is that a lot of people know a lot of people in the community. So that's how it kind of works. If we say who the judges are, some of the mappers will be like, Hey, you're my buddy. Can you give me an extra point here or there? And we're not going to have any of that. Like, forget it. We're not going to have any of that. Um, so that's why they're anonymous. That's the reasoning behind it. So like that, the competition is also going to be a lot more fair. Uh, oh, I like this. Esmongoli says, uh, since I think GLA is the strongest faction, is there a map where GLA is not that strong? Um, actually, I think, I think, just, just my opinion, um, I think in uh, Insta Shock Arena it's pretty, pretty nice, where um. China has an advantage on rushing and the GLA cannot stop that incoming rush. If China commits to the rush, GLA is going to be running like a little cockroach and has to pray that people don't go for middle or things like that. There are a few maps. Um, Roland it, is one of them, where you say is clearly the stronger army. Even China which is, one? is all right with the Elixir. The Coral Alliance, even, even this one. This one. It's actually, 
Um, I think Chile a bit because they they are lacking the um, the expansion, the uh, the licks, the air units, the air support, the defense. They are lacking that. Um, there are this is a seven player map, Purple Hearts, where Chile is alright, but USA would kill them all. If USA plays right, if the um, if all players are playing it good, USA will most likely win that map. Uh, it's a big map. There's lack of money. You have only two entrances. And you don't have that much space, so you have to expand. Already forcing the players who want to build up a lot, they have to already kill somebody or uh, expand that way to actually have a proper secondary eco. Well, that is what GLA most of the time will go for, secondary eco, if they want to win most of the time. Or they go heavily on money in the middle or between the players. Yeah. So you have to keep it all in mind. I think, Enoughly. I think GLA is probably has, uh, GLA has his weakness in the early game and uh versus a china for sure and he has a weakness against usa in the mid game and then apart from that hey it's good to be a gla that's all i can say so if you are uh let's take this map right let's say green starts here uh he's building his base next to him is a usa that usa then gets search and destroy uh literally just a fresh strat center still has that new strat center smell and he's got three or four humvees a few ambos and he pushes against the gla Man, that GLA is gonna die. Unless he's got a whole load of defenses to slow down that USA and he's quickly getting his palace up, quickly getting a Jarman, maybe some buggies, like that GLA will die. So that is a weakness that yeah. GLA has. Another thing is if you, a GLA is next to, especially a tank general, and then the tank general does double War Factory Dragon tank spam, good luck, you know? But once, luck, once you survive that, right? So let's say you go into the late game. Oh, then it's very good to be a GLA because look at this guy here. Look at green, right? Look at his base. He can defend the left side and the right side at the same time with a single army because of the tunnel network. If you are a China, you can't do that. You can't do that. You will need an army on this side. You need an army on this side, or you need to invest in a ton of MIGs just to defend yourself. Uh, or you need to, you know, keep in mind that you have a command center over here. So if you call in an EMP, it will take roughly this long before it strikes. This is the stuff that China would have to deal with. GLA, no problem. We got a tunnel network for that. And even scud launchers, pretty dope. Um, of course, GLA stealth doesn't get those, but uh, yeah, so there is that. So if you can make it easier for a China to rush a GLA, which you can do by literally just keeping the space between the players very narrow, very, very small. Ooh, that is a nice hit. Um, then yes, the GLA will have less of an advantage, more of a disadvantage. Yeah, there are also two major things. One thing is base size. You don't want the base to be too big. GLA will just build tons of markets and there's no way you can possibly kill him if he has got launches defending. True. It's going to be very difficult. The second thing is the how big the entrances are. The bigger the entrance, the in a way weaker the US Julie also gets. Yeah. Uh, because USA, it, it comes in with Humvees, maybe a big army. China will come in with, with overlords. If they all traffic them, I mean, good luck killing a Julie. Because your army will literally die by scrap launches. So the bigger the entrances, quite good. But also don't make them too big. Otherwise, <laughs> it might be less fun. Also, I got a... Oh, boys! I was waiting for it. Oh, my God. Uh, if anybody's looking for some scrap metal, it's uh, over here. <laughs> That's a ton of dead overlords. It's a nice oh, hit, man. But anyway, let me uh, let me actually answer some people in the chat, because I see some people asking questions and stuff. Uh, Mel from Hell says, uh, I play mostly against the AI. I was wondering, is there a way to make the AI better on maps? Sometimes they bug out, not getting oils and such. Um, if you play mostly against AI, I would recommend to use the advanced AI mod, which basically works on every single map. Uh, that being said, some maps have a very aggressive AI. I think it was... 24-7. 7 um, yes. The seven-player map, 24-7, has very aggressive AI that 3CG coded in there, you know, because he's like, yeah, why not? Let's do it. Um, so if you're looking for that, 24-7 is one of them. Uh, I think he had a few other maps where he also put that AI in, but I forgot. There are also custom-made AIs recently because of an event we also hosted, uh, CNCAG hosted, 
yeah, I'm not sure if you can just download and install those, though. So uh, you might want to join the Community Outpost Discord and ask CNCHD if uh, the AIs from the AI tournament are available for download. Uh, but they're basically meant to play like humans. So they will uh, do a terror tech. They will get a bunker licks and, you know, do crazy stuff like that. They even sell their command center as a GLA in the beginning, you know? Like, they are pretty <laughs> advanced AIs. Um, so, yeah, you can uh, definitely ask that. Yeah, they will rebuild CC, the most important one of all. Yeah. Blazing Trails says, Leggy's cat is a judge. Uh, that, that is confidential. We, we, we do mm. not talk about it. Anonymous judges. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Could be. Oh my <laughs> god, these scuds, man. Yeah, that's another thing GLA really has going for them in the late game. The super weapon is just insane. Scud Storm versus a nuke. It's, the nuke is such a joke, man. The nuke is great for taking out units, but not really buildings. Even then, you know where the nuke will hit. <laughs> yep, yep. That's the thing. Also, also, one thing. If the map is too big, you can hear that nuke coming in from years away. <laughs> you can hear it coming in. Minutes before it actually will land, you got enough time to expand. It is quite funny. Uh, I'll, make, I'll make you eargasm says, is an island better or imbalanced middle island like DEFCON? Wait, what do you mean? Uh, is an island better or imbalanced? Uh, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? Does he mean the, the small little spot from DEFCON? Does he mean that? Oh, I'm not following exactly that. Yeah, yeah, we'll answer you. Don't worry. We'll, don't worry. Uh, also, guys, seriously, uh, if you guys are thinking about trying out mapping, oh, man, you really got to join on Sunday. So Sunday, uh, I'm going to start 12.30 p.m. my time, which is uh, Central European time. Um, so if you're in Europe, around 12.30, yeah, keep it in mind. Um, otherwise, a.k.a. also known as 10.30 a.m. GMT. Okay, that's a lot of letters, but I promise you that's the time. On Sunday, I'm going to fire up World Builder and I'm just going to start making a map. So I'm going to start with some real basics so you guys can get started, see what you do, what you don't do, how it works. And we make a first map within like five minutes. Like, no joke, I want to do it fast so you guys can see how it works. Uh, and then afterwards, I will just slowly, like, you know, crank up that difficulty dial and uh, go into more and more advanced stuff until by the end of it you're like leggy leave me alone this is so complicated okay i'm kidding there's nothing actually complicated it's just everything with world building just takes time that is the only way i can describe it so if you want to make something really detailed it takes time you want to make it even more detailed it just takes more time it's that simple so you know it, it's all possible if you look at this map it's very nice detail. Look at the texture here. Very nice stuff. And he even has bushes on here. Like, all this stuff takes time because he clicked down every single freaking bush. So that just, that's just kind of world building for you. It's not difficult. It's just, it takes a while. So if you're willing to spend the time, give it a shot, then you should definitely join in on Sunday. I hope a lot of you will because I think it's going to be fun. And, and chill as well. Yeah. Poor Green. He bit off a little more than he can chew, and now there's a ton of nuke silos out. Actually, um, yeah. one thing that a lot of people don't know is that Tank General actually has an army advantage against Stealth. So Stealth, they don't get Scud launchers, and this kind of army, you need to use Scud launchers to kill it. Or maybe SND, angry mobs, or things like that, uh, or stealing an army, and he hasn't stolen an army. So there's no way for him to easily deal with this, and he might just use the Scud to take out those emperors. Let's see. Angry mobs are the best way, but they can still get taken care of by um, gats, migs, whatever. Flamers. Ooh, Amnon Sabora coming in with the cash saying for the world builder. Yes, thank you very much, sir. Yes, Ahmad Sabora is uh, one of the sponsors as well. He just sent me the cash, so I'll uh, forward it to the bank of the community outpost. So uh, when the winners are, well, when we know who's won, we can send the money to them. So, uh, thank you very much there. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be awesome. We, we have been hoping for new maps. We do it every year. Always getting new maps. Every That's year. What we love to do. Yeah. Every year. Yeah. Wait, I'll make you guys and says, Leggy! Sorry. Uh, he says, what I mean is, the middle is smaller in the middle. What? But a map... It means the spots. Middle is smaller in the middle, but a map is always square so we have to choose it means on how big the spots have to be where they have to be located and uh, if you want to have it against uh, the edge of the map against the fog of war or uh, if you just want them uh, more in the middle with a little bit of water i think that's what it means like yeah that is that is unfortunately very difficult to uh 
Oh, bomb truck. Okay. Wow. Nice. Uh, that it is... is very difficult to determine. Yeah. And the, the thing is, what I've noticed as well is there's no clean, clear formula. Um, because there's another six-player map called... Um, Arctic... Arctic... Tundra? Arctic Tundra? Is it? I think it's Arctic I don't know. Tundra. I'm not sure. Uh, by Anthrax. Um, and he literally made a six-player map. That uh, One of the problems in that map is the maneuverability. He's literally built a lot of... Like, there are a lot of mountains everywhere, and you can't just grab a big army and move it across. Um, but I was like, dude, the players are too close together. And he's like, what are you talking about the players are too close together? He's like, I literally copy the exact layout and size from another map that's, like, popular and stuff. And I'm like... Oh, you know, it just felt like the players were too close together um, just because of how the layout was of the map. So there's there's no easy way, guys. You're just going to have to just look at it, assess it and show us because when we play the map. Oh, wait, Ooh, he almost killed the anthrax. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, when we play the maps, when we try them out, that's when it's going to be clear um whether the spacing between the players is good and that is often one of the first things that gets discussed with a new map it's like uh yeah but your map is like 10 percent too big or 20 percent too small or things like that unfortunately that is something that is just it's it's very difficult to get it just right so for example in this map i would say yeah it's it's good it's good but I'm pretty sure this is like the sixth revision of the map that uh, 3CG was working on. The one you're looking at now, that's like revision number six, okay? So when you submit your maps, just send in a simple version. Don't spend a lot of time making like perfect details, like lovely placing of palm trees and bushes and, uh, you know, three different types of textures all in a tiny, tiny spot. And then, you know, you show it to us and we say, yeah, you gotta restart, make the map 10% bigger. Yeah, you'll, you'll feel like crap. So um, as a result, don't spend too much time making it pretty for the first few versions. And okay, we got a, we got a load of elixirs here. I would actually say um, you use like three different textures. One for the bases, one a bit for the middle, one for the mountains. Um, at your start version. So you actually know which is what and what's supposed to be what exactly. Um, more than that is not yet needed. Uh, we want to, to see if the map is balanced enough or going to be fun enough for uh, you to continue to save yourself a lot of time. Uh, Pret has a good question. He says, uh, should you split the oils so super weapons and promotions can't kill it? Um, so if you have a if you have Defcon, you know how you have like your two oils right next to each other, uh, and just you know two A10s coming in kill both oils. Uh, Pret's basically saying, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Should we split up the oils in one section and another section, or have them next to each other uh, like that? Personally, the way I see it, and that's the thing, it, it comes down to you know preference at the end of the day. Um, it doesn't really bother me that much that you can kill two oils with an A10, but I think Goldfish, I think you really hate that, right? I know it's quite all right, but it's uh, how you place them. It's where where you put the oil. That is more um, the issue. Is what, Do you want to have it similar for all bases? Are you going to have the back of the base? Maybe you want to have it a little bit more in the front, so it's a little bit uh, easier to kill. So anyway, it, it depends on how you want to make the map, what type of map you're going to go for. You, you can go for a very aggressive map, if she supplies in between the players, a lot of eco for all players, even you say So it's a little bit balanced for armies, but can actually um, expand easily to the enemy. Maybe that way you want to have it a little bit closer to the enemy um, in an aggressive way. You, you capture that, or the next thing is, oh, I take that all in between, and then I go to the enemy. It's a way of um, wanting to make the map, because you can have it all the way in the back. Pretty nice, pretty safe, close to each other, you can do it. But it, can. it just depends on what you want to go for a map. You want to have an aggressive map, a more defensive map, um, a lot of money, not that much money. It all depends on what you want I and think, what the layout of your map is. I think the best way to answer this question is perhaps a bit of a lame answer, but it's the best answer and the most truthful answer. Um, make a test version of the map where you have the oils right next to each other and let us play it. And if we go, oh my god, I lose my oils now, I'm basically dead, what is this? You know, then you know that, hey, yep. they need to be split up. And if nobody brings it up once at all, then you know it's fine. You know, it's, Just it's, make it's like that. There's one thing. Just make sure it's not it's not one uh, technical can kill both oils with just one tech terror. Maybe don't do that. Yeah, uh, that's true. That's they're true. a little bit they're a little bit split apart, so a little bit of space between, like you have in Defcon. 
Uh, but make sure it is... It is not too close, but if you can kill them both with an artillery barrage or maybe carpet or particle, I think that's alright. Which would be a small way to place it, exactly. I think that's more important of how close they are to each other. Wow. I knew it was coming here. I already started turning the angle, like, turning the camera. I knew it was coming. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> All them nukes, man. Uh, You're prepared, man. You are yep, prepared. Yep, yep, yep. I got a nice clip from that. Uh, anyway, let's see what else people are saying in the chat, because we've got a, quite an active chat with very good questions, guys. They're all very good questions. Uh, the most detailed map I've ever made took me 60 to 70 hours, says TK Leo. Oh, I believe that. Uh, when I was working on InstaShock Arena, I would... I don't know how much time I spent on that, but I would say that that I'm getting close, at least, to, to that as well. Um, let's yeah. see. You don't have to spend that much time on the map, just so you know. No, no, but... no. For, the, for this contest, you don't need to. It's... Um, I'm guessing, and this is just a guess, probably 20 hours to maybe 30 hours all in all, uh, and you can definitely have a winning map. It's, um, But, you know, you have to spend your time wisely, because if you spend a lot of time giving us an excellent map submission and we're like, lol, you have to redo all this and this and this, yeah, then your time has been somewhat wasted because you spend so much time trying to make something look pretty when the map was basically already shot down on the balance front, because balance is the most important, map balance. Um, but yeah, if you spend your time wisely and, you know, you send the map in, you wait for the feedback, you get the feedback, you use the feedback, continue getting to work and things like that. Uh, yeah, I would say that 20 to 30 hours is probably going to do it. Yeah, and the thing is, you can use an existing map, existing point, you can do it, but make sure that the web map you have is not, like, you copied actually from, it's not visible, it's like, a clearly layer, a, a different layer, but you know the different, the, you know, you know exactly, roughly how big you want your base. You know exactly where you want some, some space to be, where your player position would be. You can start from there, change it up completely. Just make sure it's like, not the same. Not the same as the other, it's not that a copy paste, cause just copy paste not good. You want to see difference between them. Um, but you can always start from a system map, which is actually the best way of going. Well, it's, uh, you're bringing up a fair point here. If you, uh, guys, if you're saying like, well, it's easy, I'll just literally make a DEF CON balanced, let's say. Um, if it's clearly a DEF CON copy and if it's clearly like heavily, heavily based and influenced off of something else, you're going to lose points in creativity. So there is that. Um, if you take an existing map that you already have, so let's say let's say this map, right? Let's say 3CG comes in and he's like, oh, I'm going to send an updated version of this. He will basically lose so many points on creativity because it's already a map that exists. It's not something new. It's not something original uh, that, you know, you've got to be very careful. That being said, though, the first time we had a world building contest, uh, the map subjugation actually won. And that one was uh, an attempt at making a different sort of DEF CON. But... If you look at that map, it still has quite a bit of original things going on there. So it's similar to DEF CON, but it's still unique enough to be its own thing. So keep that in mind. Let's see what else people are saying. Um, 70 hours? Yeah, man. Uh, is it possible to change the border, the black one, and make it a circle? No, unfortunately, no. The, the border, like, maps are squared. That's that's just it. Um, there's also no way that you can, like, limit air units to pass around the back. So, like, this this sort of triangle, like, what I'm highlighting now, I can't say, oh, I'm just going to ban air units from entering that. That doesn't exist. The only way that's possible, and it is technically possible, is with the skyscraper structure, because planes don't fly through it. So, if you build a wall of skyscraper structures, then I guess you could but let's not go down the route of building skyscraper uh, structures and stuff and your general powers will bork out and just no just no <laughs> yeah you will have three a10 planes uh one will take one minute the other one will five minutes the other one might might reach it at the end of the game <laughs> yeah 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 There's stuff like that going on carpet state making a full 360 so, uh you don't want that so there are a few structures that actually um interfere with height of uh, where units can go pass through. So I'm like, what the hell? How is that even possible? Uh, try to limit those. I can, uh, for those who want, I can actually uh, like give you a small list of uh, buildings that can do it. Like even the slots in the middle of the map. 
those are also the um, swords barking. Yeah, they are also bugging out um, air units when oh. they fly over it. I didn't know. It is one of those things, man. It, it is very strange. Also, um, Mel from Hell says, is it available on the Discord? Uh, I am not too active there, but I think I will join. Uh, if you're talking about the AI mod, that is, uh, you have to go to moddb.com, I think. Or if you just go to, if you just type in uh, moddb in uh, Google and then advanced AI mod generals, I'm sure you'll find it very soon. Uh, we don't actually have it on the Discord. It's not hosted there, so you know. Um, let's see, what else? Do, 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 do. The map should have its own identity, says Dark9. Yeah, so that's the thing uh, we were saying before about if you make a DEF CON clone, we don't want a DEF CON clone. We want a map to be its own thing. Look at this map. Look how cool this map is. And that's one of the reasons it's it, it won. It's its own style, its own look. Uh, it's like Tournament Island, but it just, you know, cranked up a few notches, looking even better, even more amazing. Um, and And... Dark is right. We want something unique, uh, something memorable. You know, you don't want to say, oh yeah, that map. And then it's like, which one? That one or that one? No, it's clear visual differences. Also, you know, it's important. Also, one thing, you can add rain, thunder, or it made the map darker. But remember, most of the time a map that will be played is a map that's light and clear to see. So if you make it dark, make sure it actually works out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's actually a very good point that you bring up. Um, during the first World Builder contest, there was a, there was a guy, um, or was it the second one? I'm not sure. And he said, I am determined to make a night map. I'm going to make night-themed uh, thing because that's what I want. Generals has it in the game engine. It works, but you never see any night-based maps. Uh, he's like, I'm fed up. I'm going to do research and uh, make it happen. The reason people don't really have it in generals, lol, a nuke here and a scud there. <laughs> uh, the, the reason you don't really see it much in generals is because the dark maps or the night maps are just so damn dark that uh, people who are watching, so like you guys watching on YouTube, if you have your screen brightness on low, you simply cannot see anything. So... You know, there are a lot of complaints from viewers, and as a result, streamers are not too keen on showing those maps. Second of all, not everybody's got a great, you know, 144 hertz gaming monitor that has the most amazing color reproduction. So, you know, some people are using shitty monitors or shitty laptop monitors, and they simply cannot see what's on their own screen. So, as a result, uh, nighttime maps are very uncommon. Uh, and yeah, but anyway, so this guy, he was determined. He said, I don't care, Leggy, I'm gonna do it, and you're gonna love it. Um, and what he did is he did a load of research. He even went for other games like StarCraft and whatever, and started looking at the colors that were used, the lighting, the shading, and everything. And he came up with uh, a night-themed map that I think everybody in Zero Hour is just okay with. Nobody is complaining, saying, oh, I can't see anything, or oh, it's, it's too dark. And nobody is like... Oh, this is a daytime map. Everybody knows it's like a night themed or at least like a twilight theme. So I can uh, I can tell you guys about that one as well. I don't know where we can download it though, uh, but I know the map name. It's called Jungle Thunder, and it's around oh. there. It's it's lurking around. I I think I might have it. I can maybe yeah, check it. It's a nice map, um, but yeah, you can make a dark map. You can make a nighttime map, but make sure it's bright enough. You can actually adjust the lightning. Uh, lighting in the maps uh, so you can actually change the brightness of how the map looks uh, but you can make look make it look dark uh, but make sure you choose the right texture and the right lightning with it uh, lighting with yeah it. Um, that's not, it's still nice and visible but it still looks like a night map uh, and there's no issues with brightness and everything also be careful with using rain N not many people are keen on using rain on maps uh, nice Nice dodge. It's not always the most fun. Yeah, Night, no. The, uh, the thing with rain is you can use it. Uh, just don't have the rain effect that's on the screen. Don't have it be so prominent. So you can actually choose how many rain droplets you want, sort of. Uh, just keep that on the lower side of things. You can still have the audio in the background of the rain noise. And, you know, the, the feeling will still come across like, oh, it's raining. Um, but yeah, so visual distortion, the same thing for snow. Don't cover a map with an insane amount of snow that people can't see where they've placed their worker. Okay, that, that just annoys the player. You want to avoid as much as that. We like realism, but what we like most is good gameplay. And this is still a game. So you have to remember that. <laughs> There's no option for players to uh, 
to really change the amount of snow and rain there is or, or just sound of some parts of the map. There's not really options for that. If we had that, it would be no problem, but we don't really have the options for that. So I'm sorry if, for those who want to. I think the rebel uh, might die. Look at the look at the army of helixes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, I'm actually thinking of uh, of quitting out and going to the next match. What do you think? It's still going on as well. I'm surprised yeah. by that. Yeah, because the GLA takes a while to die. There's still 2v1ing him. So uh, There's the tank remaining. 47 minutes in, he's still not dead. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really curious now to see if I have um, Jungle Thunder. I don't know if I still have it. Was it a six-player map or a seven-player map? Because I keep forgetting. <laughs> Blazing just a nightmare with, with snow, rain. Ah, yes, good idea. <laughs> I don't think I actually have it. Maybe I can maybe quickly. Uh, maybe I can quickly download it. Jungle Thunder CNC Labs will have it, right? Maybe I can post uh, the the link because I'm sure there will be some people who are like, yeah, sure, I want to do a night theme. You map. don't have it? Uh, no, because new PC and whatnot. Um, maybe I can send it. To oh, you have it? it? I don't know. I will check. But it's called Jungle <laughs> Thunder. I know that. I know that. Uh, no, I don't have it. That's a shame. You have it? If so, if so, uh, I'll host and you can transfer and we can have a look. I have it. I can just send it on Discord. Send it on Discord. Sure. Um, I'll also send it here in the live stream chat for you guys. So if you guys want to make a night themed map, you can do so by literally one-on-one -on -one copying his light settings because this man made it his thesis okay <laughs> like he studied the crap out of it and i think he did a good job i think it really uh yeah there you go jungle thunder version 5. for those of you wondering why why version 5 well because you're allowed five version revisions so he still had one more to go right because world builder contest it does a lot of good man it does a lot of good okay let me install it and show you guys and you'll know exactly what i'm talking about you'll be like oh that is rather nice there leggy <laughs> Jungle Thunder. It is seven player. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, okay, so let me go USA. Um, yeah, there will be a bit of a weird control bar, but guys, just bear with me. It's just it's fine. So this would be from 2021. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. I don't know if I can sell it if it kicks me out. But this is basically a night theme map, right? It's not that dark. It is dark but not that dark. It is still good enough. Even if you are like looking over here, you guys watching, probably you can still see enough of what's going on. But everything that's like visible to me is super visible, right? It's not, it's not where you're like, oh, this is so dark, can't see anything going on, blah, 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 blah. So if you're going down the route of nighttime, I suggest you copy this. That does not mean we will not comment on it. We might still say, eh, it could be a little lighter. Maybe the texture plays a role, you know? Maybe if you use darker textures, we'll say, oh, it's a little dark. You know, it's, we're still going to give our feedback the way we give our feedback. It's not, you know, but I'm just saying this is a great starting point. Uh, and let me copy this. I don't know if this works. Somebody please confirm whether this works. I just I just sent the, the Discord link of uh, Goldfish's download um, in the live chat. I don't know. I don't know if that works. Haha, uh -huh. virus will be transmitted. What? Lol. Uh, okay, okay. So uh, I really want to check out... Actually, there are a couple maps I want to check out. Um, let me make a list before I forget. So I want to check out Mortal Temptation. I don't know if you even remember that map. I play map, yes. Yeah, uh, because it's not that good, unfortunately. And not because it it's bad, but because it's too big, unfortunately. Apart from that, I love it, <laughs> but it's just too big. Uh, Six-player map, want to check out Naval Port Reyes. I wouldn't mind also showing InstaShock Arena. Volcano Rush or Volcano Revenge, one of the two. Yeah, Volcano Rush will do it. Uh, because Volcano Rush and Volcano Revenge are basically the same map. So, you know, <laughs> there is that. Uh, okay, guys, does the link work? The one I posted in the live chat. Can you download that? I'm very curious because I literally just did copy link on my on my Discord uh, message thing. Lord, I think my virus has been uh, in. <laughs> Wait, I don't have. <sighs> oh my god! I think I lost Naval Port Reyes version three. I sent it to you, right? I mean, uh, version four. I sent uh... it to you, right? Yes. Okay, good. Because, because I lost it. Because uh, of the new PC. Why you, why you lose everything, man? I don't know. I'm sorry. Fine, I'll send it to you, man. I'll send your map to your own. Yes, thank you. Oh, wow. Kaja says it works. That is that is cool. Thank you. Uh, One sec. 
uh, waiting for the fish, <laughs> waiting for the fish to send me the map. Uh, he's in voice chat, having a nice chat with me. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So this is the latest version. I'm going to tell you guys the changes that were made. I think that's probably easiest. I don't think we need to really do this uh, same map twice. Um, also, time-wise, you know, I can't just keep, you know. I mean, you can always show the other map um, straight after it. Oh, Dark already yeah, has the map, so, yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess. We could do that. Okay, so waiting for Agent, who previously disconnected. So I hope his internet's okay now. Mel from Hell says, InstaShock Arena is one of my favorites. Me too, man. But I have bias. Let's be, <laughs> let's be honest. I'm a little <laughs> bias. Confirmed, yeah. man. Yeah, totally confirmed. I mean, you know, I, I kind of made the map. So, you know, I'm not going to be like, oh, it's trash. You know, it's... Uh... It, visually, it looks good. Yeah. It looks a little bit messy in a way of um, there's no clear uh, change between the base and the middle. True. Other parts of the map, but in general, it looks very good. Very detailed. That's true. That's true. Uh, okay, now we have to wait for everyone to abort because. So, so you know. I'm actually saying to Legionnaire, redo the textures in the middle, please. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is actually good feedback uh, <laughs> on that map. I, I, I couldn't agree more, really. Um, for the rest, I do kind of like the map. I also think that there could be some other changes made that the map is a bit more open uh, in Sushok Arena. But as it is, I'm, I'm still happy with it. But like I said, I'm totally biased. Like I'm gonna love the, I'm gonna love the but, crap but, out of uh, the map. But but you but you gotta change some uh, the logo in the middle. Lol, Matt. Why does everyone keep saying that? They're like, Leggy, you're not Ice Shock anymore. Stop having Ice Shock Arena. Change it. Change it to Outpost <laughs> Arena. I'm like, no. What the hell, man? Uh, snaking history. Uh, yeah, like no like, like what is that? What is that saying? Uh, history is written by the victors. You know, we're just we just like grab a pencil or turn it around, use the eraser part, just rub out the Insta Shock part, and uh, ooh, we got. A nice donation there. Kill says, one sec, my browser's loading. Uh, can you play Jungle Thunder? It looks so cool. I've never seen it on your stream. Um, we could, we could. Yeah, we could. Uh, hopefully we're not gonna have too long matches though. Let's see how long we've been streaming. An hour, 45 minutes. I'll try and squeeze it in there. How's that? Uh, it, is a, it is a seven player map. Um, and we're mostly focusing on the six player, but we could still have a look and uh, things like that. So uh, sure, I'm gonna try my best to squeeze it in there. Uh, let me make a note of it as well. So, Jungle Thunder. Now, let me have a look at the armies here, as per always. We have Normal USA here for C4. And Gent is Air Force, who's going to be very happy, you know, because he's got a USA next to him. Actually, we have another Air Force here. Never mind, Jaff. So, we have two mm. Air Forces next to each other. That's the second time this has happened. Two Air Forces next to each other. Then we have uh, 10K. That just shows his name as OK here. I don't, don't know why the game is a little funky like that. And he is uh, laser. We've got Nuke General here for Lala, who is absolutely screwed because there's so many USAs. <laughs> and we have a Toxin General here for Dark Nine. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of USA stuff going on. So probably it's going to be a quick match. Now, uh, let me tell you guys about some of the changes that have happened in this map. So for those of you who play this uh, map, but you play the ranked version, you will know there's supplies here. And you will know that this supply dock was actually a ton of small supply piles. That could be totally abused because a GLA could come in, build one supply stash here, one supply stash here, and he would literally have two supply stashes mining off of the same supplies. Not so, I'm not saying this one, I'm saying in the ranked version. So in the ranked version, this supply, do uh, supply dock actually doesn't exist. Instead, it's like a whole load of small supply piles. Um, so like these small supply piles, you know? Um, so another thing that has happened here in this version that I've done is I've changed some of the oils to supplies. So that's sort of also there to try and get players to expand a little more because one thing that was happening in this map is you would see the oils and people would take the oils and then the middle, ah, who's, who cares about the middle? Like screw the middle, nobody cared. Uh, now with these supply piles, also there was some water here. The water has been removed, so the middle is a bit more open. Uh, so now the idea is that a guy is more likely to expand, get this cash, and then grow his base a little. Anyway, let's also see what's going on, because we have two air forces going for each other, and I'm just like, totally not caring. So, you know, there, there is that. Um, so Blue seems to be doing some nice harassment, actually. But yeah, the major issue on this map was USAs were too strong. Um, that was, I think that was a major thing. I would say GLAs were too strong. 
Because you can. Chile's in USA's. Because China's what? the GLAs could literally put one supply here, one supply here, two supplies here. They would literally be on four supplies. Yeah, Which is we, I mean, absurd. If you don't talk about uh, the ranked version. Yeah, that, that's the that's the ranked version. So, you know, there there is that. You can't have um, a player... You can't give them access to too much cash. That is that is a bit much. Like, look at this. Look at this. Dark, now building a tunnel here. The first thing he does, get a tunnel. He hasn't even captured any oil. He hasn't even tried. He's getting that tunnel because he wants to expand and get this cash. I don't think the other players really know that there's this cash because we did a transfer. So they, they might think there's oils there. Um, you know, could be. Anyway, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Um... Is there a competition for meme maps? No. Uh, we made it very clear. No tiny maps, no funky maps, no maps with uh, scripts. We literally want maps that are good for skirmish, good for tournaments, good for all those things. So don't put in custom units or custom buildings or, you know, like, oh, if you walk to this building, you magically get a thousand dollar cash crate. No, don't do any of those things because you will be disqualified. Like, you won't even lose points. You'll just be disqualified. Like, so, you know, it's a... It's a good point. There will be one fun thing: is water rising, like always at the same time. But still, that is yeah. No, even water rising is not allowed. So the only situation in which you are allowed to have water rising is if it doesn't it's affect uh, the combat zone in any way, shape, or form. So if it's off map, so like how you have an aircraft carrier exactly. here. Uh, let's say you had like I don't know another mountain here, and that mountain had water on it, and you're constantly rising and dropping that water. Hey, if you really want to, you can do that. Um, but you know, it, it just has to not interfere with the actual gameplay. You can't say, oh, after 10 minutes, this area will unlock, and there are resources there, and that's cool and that's fun. You might think it's cool, and you might think it's fun, but players like Big Size who are playing this map for the very first time don't think it's fun because it's like, what? How the hell was I supposed to know I could suddenly access money here? And that's basically why we're not too keen on it. Yeah. Players need to be able to see a map, scroll around really quick like they do like this, and know exactly what's what. Um, so no tutorials for, oh, yeah, but if you do this, you get that. No, none of that. Yeah, D don't place demo traps outside the map store train track somebody's base. Yes, whatever happens, do <laughs> not place demo traps outside of the map such that when they blow up, you can summon trains that crush everybody's base. If you do that, it's probably going to get disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I will probably play it a few times on stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fish legs, those kind of things. But, you know, <laughs> and in tournaments, eh, probably not going to happen. I mean, killing an almighty x guy with trains, I mean, it's fun, but uh, it is not really balanced. Yeah. Uh, are flying dozers allowed? Um, only if a nuke MiG hit one. Otherwise, no. Well, let's see. Actually, Dark is playing this very well. Remember what I said? He's getting that tunnel. Now he's getting the supply. He's getting another tunnel here. And you can see this guy expanding. You can see his eye is literally on this cache. Like, he's, he's just worming his way closer. And look at his map control. He's slowly overtaking the map. And that in itself is what's going to generate more conflict between the players. Because we now have Cyan here, who's like, oh, I want the oils. He's going to be relatively close. If Dark expands here, it is also possible for Cyan to start, you know, having some aggression against Dark. So, aggression is always something that we, we like to see. When, it, when people have an easy time bunkering and they're stuck in their own base, we don't really like to see that. And that is something that Volcano Rush actually suffers from. You cannot cross the map in Volcano Rush and attack the other player because there's a giant freaking volcano in the middle. So, you know, <laughs> there's a player here, there's a player here, but they simply can never fight each other because of that giant freaking volcano. I mean, okay, you can have air units, but that doesn't ever happen, you know, so. Walid says, Fish, did Jake come to meet you? Well, it's pretty funny because he was saying, Oh, I know your address. You're located over here. And he literally said the wrong country. So, you know, <laughs> it will be interesting to see if Jake, you know, hopped into his car <laughs> and drove <laughs> into the middle of God I mean, knows where. <laughs> he did DDoS my VPN, though. And then he just probably <laughs> beat up a random guy saying, Are you Goldfish? <laughs> uh, some uh, people are quite funny, aren't they? Demo oh. because it was losing because of uh, trains coming out outside the map, uh, inside the map because of uh, demo traps. No, man, he was already sour uh, before that. <laughs> he was already like, yeah, 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 and complaining. So he, he was he was just waiting for an excuse. Uh, Doctor and, and then I killed him with trades. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, Dr. Drax says, how can I start building a map? Um, Dr. Drax, do you have the game installed? That's number one. 
Uh, number two, I suggest you get a uh, gen patcher and then go to the additional content tab and then select the world builder tab and then install the new world builder because there is a new world bu uh, world builder it's not a huge difference compared to the original but it's 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 it helps it's nice uh, so that's what i'm going to be using as well i'm going to show people how to whoa nice uh, i'm also going to show people how to uh, use it how to install it on uh, on sunday which will take me like a minute because it's really easy to do um, and then yeah i'm going to start making a map on sunday so if you're not sure how to make a map just you know make sure you're around on sunday and uh, tune in, and you will know literally within mere minutes, because I'm just going to sort of rush through the beginning of how to make a map uh, such that everybody can follow, everybody can understand, because you really just need to do, like, I don't know, five actions, and then you have a map up and running already. That, like, that's, that's just the basics. It's super easy. Yeah. Also, one extra thing when making a map is make a little bit of height difference sometimes. It, it might actually be fun and scores you uh, extra points on geometry. Yes. Yeah, we don't want just pure, purely flat maps, but also keep in mind that you don't have too many random hills where you can drive over with an army the entire middle, um, where units will bug out. You also have to be careful about that. Yeah. Um, so the thing is, the map you're seeing right now, uh, Naval Port Reyes, was the winner of the World Builder Contest 2020. Uh, just like how I was showing the other one, which was, um, oh nice, uh, was Coral Islands, also a World Builder Contest winner. Um, you can see that this map is nice. You got some geometry going on. You got some mountains, and somebody else disconnecting. We've had a lot of people disconnect so far, but you know, okay, whoopsie. <laughs> oh, he was dead anyway. Um, so this is just nice. If you see this, the the game Command and Conquer Generals has a 3D game engine, which at the time was like, oh my god, strategy game, 3D, amazing. But it's still nice. You can have this sort of like 3D effect. We should make use of that. Uh, if you have a map like Tournament Island is completely flat, doesn't mean it's ugly, but I don't know. This is still nicer. You have high differences, you have terrain, uh, you have hills. Man, that's some sick micro there from that new cannon. Nicely done there by Lala. But, uh, you know, so that's why we're sort of promoting that. That's one of the things why we have geometry. So geometry is the quality of the cliffs, although this is not a very qualitative cliff. It's better than some. It's just a bit of a blob sticking out. Uh, this could definitely better. Uh, could definitely be better. Uh, just saying. Um, but yes, high differences are fun. Look at this. Even here, you can see the middle section is a bit lower. Uh, you know, than the bases. You have here a bit higher, here a bit lower. It's fun like that. And goldfish is right, and you get points for doing that kind of stuff. So you know. Yeah. Also, uh, make sure that the cliffs are visible using some sort of texture change or something, so you actually yeah. know there's a cliff there. Yeah. If it's not visible, there's a cliff there, and my Humvees will bug out trying to kill an overlord. Good luck, my army of overlords will be, uh, my army of Humvees will be dead because of the cliff, which I didn't see. Someone wanted to attack fish. What the hell? Yeah, it's fine though. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> he was gonna end the stream anyway, I think. So. Yeah. Well, I was on my final game, and then he DDoS. He was not happy. Dr. Drax <laughs> says, uh, I have the game, I have Gen Tool and Gen Patcher. Good. That's good. Uh, Zone says, I've never used General's World Builder. Don't worry. It's it's easy to use, man. Just honestly, if you guys follow me on Sunday when I do the stream, uh, remember, I'm not, I'm not going to stream at around this time, okay? I'm going to stream like uh, 10 hours earlier from this time now, but then on Sunday. I know it might sound confusing, but I know some people are not good with time zones. So, like, you know, like, look at your time right now. Subtract 10, right? <laughs> That's the time I'm going to be streaming on <laughs> uh, on, uh, on Sunday. Uh, and just follow me along and, like, you'll see. It's really easy and it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty fun, pretty nifty. Um, the most complex thing there will be is actually putting down the player positions, which is very easy. Dr. Drax says, World Builder version 2.7. That's the one. Are there any tutorials that teach how to do maps? Yes, uh, there's one already in the description by Anthrax. Um, overall, I think that's one of the best tutorials out there at the moment. Uh, the problem with the world builder tutorials that are on the internet is they vary a lot. Like some of them expect you're an absolute noob. Some of them expect you to be like this pro legendary world builder already. Uh, so that, that's why it gets a little like, eh, which one should I follow? Uh, Anthrax's one is 
pretty fast paced, but it's a it's a good one as well. If you're Thanks. if you if you're CNC curious, HD had also. Uh, yeah, but even CNC HD he has some parts where he explains just one thing. Uh, and that's it, or he glosses over other things, at least in my opinion. Uh, but that's the great thing about doing this as a live stream on Sunday. If somebody gets stuck, I literally can just jump in there and then, and we can continue, you know, without people going like, oh, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, and that's the advantage of doing this as a live stream. Well, you can ask your stepsister, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, what do you think of a potential balanced boss mirror, uh, boss general mirror map? Everyone would also have boss powers. I think it's really cool uh, for free-for-all tournament deciders. Uh, there actually already is one. Uh, TK Leo, I don't know if he's still in the chat. He actually made one, uh, I think about a year and a half ago. Uh, he made a no money, cash bounty, everybody boss general map, if I recall. Maybe it was with money, I'm not sure. But he made one, he made one. But uh, generally, if you have uh, free-for-all players, they like to play what they're used to, you know, so uh, and another thing with boss general, unfortunately uh, it's not easy to play as boss general because everybody makes some slight changes to boss general um, because they're like, well, I'm already modding this map anyway, let me suddenly add, I don't know, point laser defense for auroras for boss general and stuff, like, I don't know sometimes you get, like, weird changes that are made, so there's no such thing as a standard boss general, really, when you play online. It's always like, huh, what is the mapper going to add in and remove? So there is that. Uh, yes, exactly. Also, what about shrouded maps? Like, Fog of War, instead of being grey, you can see the map completely black. What about that, Leggy? Um, I don't think, I don't think that's good. I don't think that's good. At the end of the day, um, players... They know the game. They know, you know, like like Blue over here. He's got an Ambo, he's got his Humvees, he's got advanced training. He knows how to use these things. He knows how they work, when they work, when they don't work. And it's that sort of knowledge that comes together with us, you know, clicking away and having fun and stuff. If suddenly something like the Humvee is changed where it doesn't deal the same amount of damage or things like that, then players will just get confused, frustrated, and be like, ah, what is this map? It's changing the Humvee, da 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 the same could go for the scouting. If you, as a USA, let's say, you're starting up a map and you're like, oh, everything is pitch black. I don't even know where the hell my oils are. It can be really demotivating. And I think if you try that on an online match, people will just rage quit. They'll be like, what the hell is this? They'll just quit. You know, if you have a map like DEFCON, where everybody knows it's DEFCON, people will probably still play, but they will still get frustrated, especially the people who don't know DEFCON inside out. So... Uh, the thing is, it's just better to let players do what they know how to do, if that makes sense, and give them the tools to do that efficiently and effectively. So for example, like even this, I can give a nice example. There's an oil derrick here, right? That's great. Don't have this be a long freaking platform going all the way to the edge and put the oil here. Because a player wants to just quickly grab an oil and move on. He wants to, you know, guard this oil, defend it, and continue attacking and focusing on other things. Uh, the same with supplies. It, it has to, like, there's a path that players will take. Um, like, for example, what we saw with Dark, right? He, he built this, uh, this tunnel network here because he had this supply, he had a tunnel network. His next logical step, he's like, you know what? I'll just build this here. It was made super easy and smooth for him to make that transition. And that is the stuff we want, to give players the ability to make such a transition and make it happen. Um, don't annoy players by doing things that you think are clever, but the players are like, what the hell? This is this is just getting in the way of me playing my game, you know? I, I don't know if I'm explaining it very well, but it's a feeling, if that makes sense. I don't know. For those of you who get it, you get it. If you don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, leggy ranting too much, man. Um, for Sunday... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you can, we do allow it. Um, so the main supply dock, you can change the value. Uh, I think there's a cutoff limit. I think we said the cutoff is 35,000. I'm not sure. So if you want to add 5,000 to it, you can, but not more than that. Uh, generally, it's best to just leave it standard 30,000. Uh, if you want to reduce it, you can as well. Uh, I don't think reducing is so bad because visually it looks different. It'll look like this. And you can see it's not a full supply dock. Um, the small cash piles do not touch the cash value of the small supply piles. So these supply piles don't suddenly change them and give them an insane amount or reduce them to very little. Just don't touch them. Either you place these suckers down or you don't. So just make a decision on that. That's the only thing I can say about that. 
Uh, let's see. So Fury says, for Sunday, you need to teach how to use the measuring tool. Yes, I will definitely cover that. Don't worry. Uh, Apparently, I'm drowning. You are drowning? I don't think Lee. Uh, wait, let me see. <laughs> Score also says, uh, would it be that advantage if I'm actually working in a game dev studio with RTS games, maps? Wait, what? If I'm actually working in a game dev studio with RTS games? Wait, you're a professional level designer for RTS studio? Really? Well, that's actually interesting news. <laughs> um, if that gives you an advantage, then that's an advantage for you. But score, I'm sorry, man. It doesn't guarantee you the win. You still have to produce a good map, you know? <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. At True. the end of the day, even if uh, somebody has a lot of experience or skill or know-how, um, that is, uh, that's good for them, but it's the map that is actually going to get the win, not the mapper, if you know what I mean. Like, we are going to grade the map. Whoever made the map, we don't care. We're just going to grade how good the map is. So if you want to make an amazing killer map that is literally perfection, go for it and you'll probably win. But, uh, you know, you're going to have to make a good map first, you know what I mean? Oh, wow, look at that. Nice. Recently got a job. Hey, congrats, man. Yeah. That is, Imagine uh, making the most beautiful map, but balance is completely terrible. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's possible as well. Uh, the thing is, the thing is, at the end of the day, we're still going to have judges judging the map. So um, you might have done a study, let's say, and know what the exact perfect combination for balance is, but if players disagree, sorry to say it, you're probably still not gonna win. So it is, it is gonna be a bit of that as well. Um, so, uh, yeah. I, I like Boreal1 saying casual flex, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, congrats, man. That's really great news. It's... It's still not a zero hour flex though. <laughs> still no zero hour flex. No, he's he's uh, he's gone, man. I haven't seen him in ages actually. Uh, anyway, so let me actually open up the um, the ranked version of the map, and I can quickly show you all the difference when I find it because I have a lot of maps. I'm getting there. You do have a lot of maps. I do have a lot of maps, and I have way less maps than you, though. <laughs> Remember? You're like, oh shit, my game's crashing. I, I, just, I just removed all my rank maps. It's good. It's fine. Yeah. Okay, so let me quickly show you guys what I'm talking about here. Um, why this map, in my opinion, was broken. And, uh, well, maybe not broken, but definitely a bit on the unfair side. So, yes, I know my control bar is whack. I'm sorry. Deal with it. Um, so you could do this, right? So supply number one. Whoops. Damn it. Did I? Is that a fake building? No. So two. Here, look at this. Look how easy it is. Yes, I'm literally placing, uh, playing this with my hotkeys because there's nothing for me to click on. <laughs> Why? It's completely broken as well. Yeah, I know. It's completely broken. But you guys get the, get the picture. So this... And then because this is not one supply dock here, and this this is the old version. There you go, look at that. You can have four supplies here, which is just ridiculous. And there you go. I mean, this is, this is like too much, man. This is too much. So in the latest version, the one we just saw, uh, this has been replaced by one supply dock. And these three small supply piles have just been removed. So it, it very much already helps with the balance, at least in my opinion. And then we changed the oil in the fun a lot more for, uh, forward. Find my mouse. Oh, that was weird. Hello? Uh, Luggy? Hello? Can you hear me? Uh oh. Hello. Encoding things, so I'm it's actually related, but uh, you know, I was about to blame Jake. <laughs> Lol, could <you? laughs> uh, but yeah, I, uh, I think someone saboteured you, man. Yeah, at a saboteur, I had to get rid of you know, it's uh, you know, how it is yeah. you only lose power for 30 seconds, so just there we go, back online. <laughs> um, let's see which which map was I gonna do next because I actually made a little list. Was it Mortal Temptation? I think it was. 
Uh, Mortal Temptation, I really want to check out. Uh, Jungle Thunder, I will still try and do that one. Uh, which other map? Volcano Revenge. Or Volcano, Rush, yeah, Volcano Rush or Volcano Revenge. Uh, let's do Volcano Rush, just because there's less people, so we'll be able to uh, uh, do it. So let's do ah, five player. Actually, if you want, you can obs, I guess. Me? Obsing? It's yes. up to you. Everything is better than uh, having to watch uh, a stream delay. I can screen share with you if you want. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. It should work fine. I mean, you know, says the guy whose PC just randomly switched off. But uh, it should actually work hey, fine. <laughs> so, so I'm not the only one having issues lately. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. I know, man. It's just, as a streamer, it's so unpredictable that things sometimes just happen. It's just, ah. Uh... And I think you I have too many off. people in the in the thing anyway let's yeah. start with mortal temptation because people will be like why leggy why it's a good but map the only issue is its size i swear oh wait this is also in in gentle yeah but apparently it also the game is not crashing every five seconds yeah that's that's true um <laughs> uh i know says did you explain how to upload the maps in for the competition no that's not something i actually covered uh, wait, someone go ops. Uh, that's not something I actually covered. But if you are in the Discord um, and you've signed up, then you'll be able to upload maps into the uh, maps download channel. I forgot what it's called. What was it called? How do we call it? Uh, in the WBC 2023 maps channel. Yes. Okay. Let's go, accept, and we do transfer. You want to know something? Ticalia already has another map draft. <laughs> I know, but look, we're not going to cover TK Leo's maps tonight because that will just give him an unfair but, advantage. Because But what you can do is just show how map draft should look without giving feedback. Ooh. No, no, no. I'll wait. If there's going to be enough maps coming in, then I'm going to do an extra stream on Tuesday. Um and if we don't have that many maps, then I will just cover it on Friday. I think we'll do it like that. I'm just quickly checking that map. It has a texture bug. Which one? The, the draw from Tika Leo. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Tika Leo would not be happy. Walid says, it's 2 a.m. here. I'm sorry. I know I started a little later today. Uh, that's actually because I was still working on the announcement video today. So literally the moment I finished that announcement video, that's when I was like, okay, now I'm going to eat. Now I'm going to stream. <laughs> like it, was, it went in that order. Uh, I have to say the map looks already decent. The one he posted. Nice. Okay. It's already a nice layout. No rules. Let's do it. No rules? What? Hopefully everything will work for you guys. Uh, with the control bar and whatnot, because, you know, I had a PC crash. I'm not sure how my program's going to react to that. Should be okay, though. It should. I mean, should, right? Spoken like a true software developer, right? Ugh. I cannot see. Let's see. <laughs> Do I get the nice control bar? Yes. Yes, it works. Huh. Okay. All right. Well, let's not, let's not talk about it. But anyway, there you go. Mortal Temptation, created by El Chapo. That was uh, 3CG's name. And he was the World Bu uh, Builder Contest winner. Instashock is... The first time we did the World Builder Contest and I moved to Community Outpost, now it's a Community Outpost thing. Because, you know, IPs, they, they, they transfer. I don't know, I'm just kidding. Don't worry too much about it. But yeah, so this is uh, the five-player map that won. There was this one and Volcano Rush that actually won this uh, competition with the five-player free-for-all maps. As you can see, the map looks absolutely sick. Look how cool this stuff is. Look at that. Like, this kind of stuff that's cool. Like, people said, uh, Leggy, can I use scripts and whatever? Yeah, you can use scripts for cool shit like this. This is just so cool, right? Um, but then the actual gameplay of this, right? When there's a map and you say the fun factor of it. So when uh, Goldfish was like, yeah, Defcon's are like a nine. This map is not that high because you have a huge opening, like, base. And we have... Three GLAs. I can... Spoiler, the Chinas are not going to make it, you know? You have so much space to build, a load of markets, and look how tiny this opening is. Super easy to defend. You can literally build a tunnel network here, tunnel network here, tunnel network here, and just use scud launchers to just destroy anything coming in. You've got ample time to do that, which means this is sort of a main entrance, which also is, yeah, it's moderately sized. Then you have a big one, and then you have the other one, because the other side. Um... The actual gameplay on this, like even this, very little space, so you can just about build one tunnel. And when the tunnel is there, 
that tunnel's there. Good luck getting rid of it. It's uh, it feels very stiff the gameplay on on this uh, on this map. Uh, let's see. Boreal one says, "Is it down again?" Severe's frame skip. Uh, not seeing anything on my end. It's looking good for me. Yes. Uh, you can try put it on the 1080p or 1440p because I've noticed that that actually is working a bit better and the stream delay gets reduced significantly. It goes down to only seven seconds. So that's uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, but yeah, so I foresee a lot of GLAing. I'm not even sure if we're going to sit through the whole match here just because I know on this map, if you have three GLAs, it can go on for a long time because everybody just gets an insane amount of black markets. And uh, yeah. Middle is actually very nice here by Fury. Look at that. He just went for it. And this is something a China normally doesn't do because look how far he had to travel out of his base to get those supplies. Normally, you don't see it. I think Fury's doing it because he's like, eh, the other guys haven't seen the map before. But, you know, if, if this was like a high tier professional eight player, I mean, a five player free for all game, size and Xcal and stuff, they, they wouldn't send the supply all the way to the middle. I think what this map could actually um, benefit from is already that uh, forward supply on command center I talked about before. On this map, put it all a little bit more to the middle. I think that already would work great. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. The command center is... Uh, well, I would say the command center is in the middle of the, the space, but, you know, yeah, if the supply is moved a bit up, so if this supply is probably over here, and then the command center is moved somewhere over here, then you already feel like you're a little closer to that middle, and, you know, that will already help. But probably in this map, um, you know, mind you, guys, so you know, this is still um, uh, a winner, still a very good map. Um, and at the time, our feedback was not as good as our feedback would be now, because as feedback givers, we have more experience as well. Um, you know, probably some supplies where the firebase is, for example, would already open things up a little bit as well to make people want to go to that middle. Um, but yeah, this map is just very big. And that's uh, unfortunately, I think, why it doesn't really get played that much. I think this is probably uh, one of the maps that has won that barely has been played, uh, even though it's won in the in a world builder competition, just because of these things. Here, look at this. Yeah, one this demo trap and nothing can pass. Not even a red guard. <laughs> the thing is, a map like this, you can have a big map. Uh, but you have to be careful where your base spawns and how big the main base is. You can actually separate the main base into different parts if that is something that might work on your map. It, it is possible to separate one base into like three sections if that is. You can do that. Um, but if you make a map too big, make sure that your command send it away is able to still reach the middle very fast and still is able to, uh, to get back, you know. Plays around with the commands of spawn, uh, spawn points and separate your base maybe in different parts. So it is it's a little bit uh, less big than you might think. Um, Kiyoshi in the chat says, isn't this map from Shockwave? Uh, no, this map is from the 2020 World Builder Contest. Uh, but I know that a lot of the mods, they tend to just, you know, look for good maps all around the internet. And they're like, let's throw it in the, in the mod pack. Or they make a mod specific version where they change the money and stuff. Um, but yeah, so this map is is not. Oh look, train. Uh, this map is not technically uh, from a mod. The mod may have just taken that in. Uh, but this is uh, this got created because of the 2020 contest. Yeah. Um, Kaja says, "I'm thinking regular free for all map. But everyone would start as an unmodded boss general. It'll open up a lot of opportunities in a decider while the game is balanced." Um, Yes and no. It, it kind of ties in with what I said before. With players know what they know, they like what they like, and they're just going to be thrown into a lot of unknown stuff. So again here, Lala's demo. He's building a load of quads. He builds these quads because he knows how to use them, what to do with them. Uh, if you suddenly give somebody boss general and he can make the choice between building quads and gat tanks and overlords, he'll be like, wait, what? What's going on here? And there'll be a lot of that confusion, that initial confusion of having to basically learn how to play an army um, and even though you might know the units, it is... Uh, oh, look at that. Both Chinas died. Lol. Um, even though you know the units, getting the right unit combination and stuff, that is also stuff you got to learn. So players will just feel uncomfortable. What you're saying might be fun when you're, like, in a LAN with a bunch of buddies and you're just playing together. 
yes, then it's fun and it's nice. Or if you're just like, you know, Goldfish might be like, yeah, let's do something crazy. Let's just play a map where everybody's boss general. But for tournaments, no way. You're not going to see that because the players will just be like, you know, not used to what to do. They don't know what to do. And yes, it could still be fair, but it still differs too much from what the players are used to. It's like, you know, if you if you have like football or something, you know, and then you tell the football players to play rugby, they might know the rules to rugby, but they'll be like, wait, what? What am I doing? Like suddenly their whole tactic and scheme and everything is different. It might still be a ball sport, but it's just, you know, and they might still be athletes. They might still have a lot of, you know, fitness and running and capabilities, but it'll just feel too different. And I guess that is sort of how it works here as well. If you have the boss general mod, uh, whether it's, you know, original boss general or not, People just aren't used to playing with it, so they don't really know what to do. Uh, Leggy, what about trains and being able to board them? No. Basically, if you don't see any maps having something, probably better not to have it. Uh, one of the examples also written in the, in the fine print is don't have a random crop duster flying through the sky. Um, we've seen that happen once or twice. Where people are like, yeah, it's cool, it's nice decoration, but it's distracting because suddenly you see something moving across the screen and you're like, oh, what's that? Oh, it's a freaking crop duster. You know, like, don't do that stuff. So if you're seeing something that's, like, never done, ever, probably it's a good idea to avoid. That's just the general rule. But you can always double check. No problem. Always ask. Like, for example, this map has something that most maps don't, which is you have a lot of buildings here, like a lot. Um... I don't know if that's a good idea. Probably my advice would be like, you know, keep this one and get rid of all the others. Or, you know, keep this one and get rid of all the others. Um, but I guess, you know, when they're in the back here and they're not really useful, I guess it's okay. And like, these are just strictly decorative. So that's perfectly fine. You know, if you have like uh, buildings you can't get into anyway. What do you say about a tray moving on the map? Cause I've seen someone uh, question that as well. Yeah, so what we what we saw earlier was a train coming in here, and I spotted it on the minimap, and that's when I checked it. Um, I'll be honest, yeah. it's probably better to not have that, and I'll tell you why. Two reasons. One, most people don't have the scouting to see that train anyway, right? I'm saying specifically on this map and in, in in the conditions of this map, right? So if you have this oil your scouting will end somewhere here, right? So the train is already off the map, so the players can't see it. So who can see it? Maybe an observer like me, right? The only reason I spotted it is because of the minimap. So that's the second thing. Uh, still visible on the minimap. So if it's on the minimap, a player might be like, hey, what's that? Because they're suddenly seeing a dot moving across. So if you're going to have a train, like decorative, whatever, it's best to say hide on minimap. There are ways to do that with the map.ini and things like that. Um, so then it would be less of an issue. But really and truly it doesn't add that much in my opinion so i would just say don't bother uh, i was actually meaning with a train on the map itself be able to crash your units <laughs> well to be honest like this one has it as a decor uh, as a decoration and Pret said like can you actually have a train that you can board so you know trains are an actual thing in the game you know they're not just for memes goldfish they're not just for memes what the hell man but uh, yeah, <laughs> remember what I was saying, guys? Like, it's just gonna be these three GLAs. Well, look at the situation. Three GLAs, this one's starting to build his capital city over here. This one's building his capital city over here. <laughs> and the other one is uh, stealth and trying to hang on because he's stealth. Yeah, so that, that, that kind of sums up why we don't see this map very often. Clearly, it's very oriented towards GLAs because they have tunnel networks that instantly teleport an army from one side of the map to the other. If everybody's a GLA, I think this would be absolutely fun to play, although very likely to crash because of, you know, the sheer space there is, so the amount of markets everyone's going to build. But, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to say something that has nothing to do with the, ter uh, with the tournament uh, contest. If anyone is able to make the train, make the, the Thomas the Train song, that would be amazing. <laughs> Thomas the Train Actually, in the game. So instead of the train noise, it will actually uh, play, play that song. That would be amazing. Yes, it would be amazing. But don't put it in any of the maps. Like if you want but to try and win, that. that is a sure, that's a sure way to lose points. You can add custom uh, content. We do allow that. Um, so if you want to add custom models, and I'm talking to you, Adrian, because I know you're like the most active model maker. Like he's making like crazy pipes and shit. Like that's allowed, uh, and that can be added in with gen patches. Just the rule is. Um, 
any custom content needs to be for decorative purposes only. You cannot suddenly add in a new model of a building that, you know, is only visible to people who have the files. You know, in other words, an invisible building floating around space. No, we can't have that. If you want to insert like a weird kind of tree, yeah, sure, go for it. Because if the tree is not there, it doesn't change anything from a gameplay point of view. Same is with the textures for the water. Uh, we have Tika Leo most of the time adding some some of his own textures to it. Uh, for other players who don't have it, it will look like a bug texture with, with some stripes through it and stuff like that. But uh, it doesn't change anything on the map itself. Yeah, and, and that is more my fault because I changed some stuff for the custom map pack installation for Gen Patcher. But I fixed that now, and then the new version of Gen Patcher that should be sorted. So, you know. Yeah, it was working <laughs> it for me. And Leggy was like, I was like, oh, you don't need that file anyway. And he deleted the file. And Leggy broke it. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, and let's, do, broken textures. let's do transfer and re. Okay, Fury doesn't like the map for some reason. Uh, there was Mamo who really didn't like the map. Uh, remember uh, during a rush? Uh, yeah, during Outpost Live, he's like, "Man, why am I always playing on this map? <laughs> always on this map." You know? Oh, he doesn't like it. He he's like, like, "I hate I this it. map. I'm always losing on this map." Uh, uh, the, the first land party, I gave major um, things that were beneficial for only like one or two spots on the map, uh, and then the map creator actually actually changed those after the land party. It was actually listening to it still after the um, the event was done. It was like. Wait, it's still imbalanced. It can still be better, and he still made those improvements afterwards. It just feel very nice and and nice of him. Yep. Actually, made the map a lot more balanced. Yep. Now that's um, yeah, that's that's kind of what we hope for as well with the contest. That you're like, oh, you know, this map is my baby. So if people give some feedback later on, even after the contest, that the mapper goes, you know what? Let me update this a bit. You know, that that's that's like the best part. That's always great. Because I took full advantage of that. <laughs> All right, so let's see Volcano Rush. Definitely want to show you guys this map. So this is uh, another map that won. Uh, and I think you'll see why. I think Mortal Temptation, it's a cool map, but that's like the best way I would describe it. It's cool, and for single player, it's excellent. Like against AI, it's a really nice map, a really fun map to play. But for online, yeah, not as much. Um, over here... Let me quickly say, yeah. Volcano Rush and Volcano Revenge are the most balanced maps out there for all armies. According to Goldfish. Little asterisk. According there. to me. Yes. According to me. Yes. It is the most balanced one where all the armies can actually have a good chance of winning. Even Tank has a very good chance of winning. Yeah. Okay, so let me uh, do the armies real quick. We have Norman China for Benz. And, whoops, I pushed the wrong button. Lol. That's fine. Uh, Air Force here. Again, an Air Force. In insane. For Tom... He's going to be very happy. He's next to a, a nice and normal purple, normal USA, which is AKM. And then we have uh, Laser General here for Drax. And we have Fury here as Toxin General. Now, let's have a quick chat about this map. Uh, what makes it good? What makes it bad? So the good is that natural progression, right? Which is the supply. Look at what Yellow is doing, Fury. He's like, I'm sending a worker forward. He's Toxin, so he's going to get a tunnel network here. There you go. Um, he's probably going to try and get a tunnel network here as well. He's going to try and take this cash. At the same time, we've got a China here who might just be like, hey, I want this money. Get a war factory up, spout some dragon tanks in this direction. You can see that happening as well. In, in fact, he's taking a different approach. He just sent a dozer to both sides and seeing where he's going to get lucky. So over here, he's not going to manage. He's going to have to retreat. But basically, the players, look how close they are already, naturally. Nobody's tried attacking anyone, but they're already coming close together. And that opens up the possibility of conflict, and that makes the gameplay more fun. Look at this. Free does a kill. Fury sees it right away. And just like that, Green now knows Fury's here. He's scary. He might just react and go for Fury now. Um, but anyway, let's see. You also have the oil. The one thing I don't really like that much about this map is that this is such a narrow passage for the oils. Like, I, I really wouldn't mind if that was like widened, like maybe 50% more or something. Uh, there's a nice building here as well. I like that. Um, the oil derrick is nice. You have two oils in your main base as well. And there's this giant volcano in the middle. So that's like the decorative part of it. Uh, the downside of that is that, like I said before, green, if he wants to attack purple, there is literally no way. There's no way because blue is just in the way. He has to sneak past blue in order to attack purple. Um, so the volcano, if it was completely flattened, it might actually increase gameplay. But then, you know, it's an X volcano rush, like the volcano <laughs> gets removed. 
So uh, it's just rush. It's just called rush. It's just called rush then. <laughs> but uh, you know, so overall, I uh, I like how this is quite open. It gives the players a lot of freedom to attack. So in the very beginning, during the DevCon match, in fact, now we get now we get to see why. Uh, I said like, oh, look how nice and open this area is. You can grab a big army and maneuver it around without any hassle, without any problems. Uh, and that's sort of what you see over here. Look how big and open this is. You have so much ability to micro here. Uh, at the same time, this gap is big, but it's not like players are constantly dying. So apparently having a gap this big is not even that bad to have. Um, so yeah, no, it's just it's just an interesting map in that sense. Uh, the only problem I think on this map is that it's not 100% balanced. So you can even see on the mini map, you know, it's not exactly, you know, volcanoes yes. maybe not equidistant from everyone. The oil's wise, yeah, uh, yeah. And you can see, for example, like this one, this sort of, you know, from the star, if it's like a starfish, right, uh, from the volcano is leaning a little bit more to the left, in my opinion. And, and this one is a little bit more of a gap compared to, let's say, this guy over here. So you got some things going on there, but it still ended up winning. So, and I think it won by quite a bit yeah. for, for the five player category. The thing is, balance wise, this map is perfect. It's it's very good. You have all armies that are able to win. Because the thing is, um, building money here on such a big entrance, it's one big entrance. Like building money safely, it is difficult. It is not easy. No. Unless you, you take somebody out or expand in a way, uh, it's not easy. Um, China ca can go build hackers, they can go multiple supplies, they can go multiple oil, kill somebody straight away because they're all very close. The big entrance allows for no small points or uh, lots of, um, how is it called, a traffic jamming. Uh, USA has enough space to drive around with the Humvees, a lot of space to work around with that. Uh, say with every army has its uh, good and bad size on this map. And I think this is why it's the most uh, one of the best maps out there. Julie doesn't have really that camping position of let's go take out the middle or let's say the money in between me. Like, it doesn't really have that on this map because it, there, there's not such place of camping in a way. Yeah. Um, well, it's still possible if you, like, yeah. if purple takes out blue here, then he has this second space sort of, and look how big it is. He could just choose to defend it and then just fill it with drop zones. Uh, but the thing is, because there's such a wide sort of opening into his base, it's difficult to defend all of it. It makes it easier for, let's say, green to punch a hole and then go through. Uh, and the thing is, you also have to do it on the other side. You have to do it here against the other player. So it's just, you need to invest a lot in the defense. Um, so it's pretty hard to really pull off successfully. Usually GLAs can uh, pull off a late game win quite nicely. Because, you know, tunnel networks make it nice and convenient. And then they just build a load of markets and then build some scud storms and whatever. But, uh, yeah, I do agree that this uh, here, the map balance is pretty damn good. It's pretty damn good. I mean, geographically, it did get less points. But uh, it has a lot of mods at the side that it's not uh, really part of. And then one big volcano. But really, it's nice and flat. It's nice and open. Um, your map doesn't have to be nice and flat and nice and open. It doesn't have to be like that. Um, but reminder, two small areas, like uh, we saw in previous map, it is terrible. Too small, too big can be good, can also be bad depending on what type of map you have. It's a lot of money, too little money. Like, it depends on, on what, what the map is in general. So that's why we'll still give feedback on each inv individual map to give you honest feedback on how to improve that map in, in itself. Uh, but in general, this is... I think the best balanced map of the arm army wise. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I mean, you can disagree with me, but <laughs> I wouldn't say it's the best map and oh, this is, uh, you know, because the thing is when people say this is the best map, they they take it like it's a template for, oh, this is how all maps should be. But I don't get that, that feeling that this is to that level, the best map. It is very good. Yeah. But, you know, the, the thing I, is, I, what bothers me is that you can't go and yellow and purple will simply never be able to fight each other. So let's say orange is like this, right? He's in the way. He's in the way. Um, he's literally a buffer. He is a, he's a human shield for purple in this situation. <laughs> there is no way that yellow, as big as he is, there's no way for yellow to start attacking this guy. And that is something True. that, in my opinion, is a bit of a letdown in this map. 
That's the only, um, that's a real bad side on this. But army, I mean, just army-wise, be able to win, um, I think that's quite, I think that's the most similar for all armies. Um, instead of other arm maps like Roll Island or Nilporeas, the, the chances of a China losing is way, way bigger than on a map like this. Um, that That's the only real thing. Uh, but yeah, the yeah, ways you can attack, it lacks a little bit. That I uh, I have to say that it lacks some. Um, it lacks. Ooh, this is gonna be painful. Unless it's just super weapon, then you can attack whatever you want. <laughs> Ooh, Fury doing a good job here. He's doing a very good job. Yeah, Green is pretty screwed. He's coming with the cavalry, but there's a lot of quads here. But Fury's not focusing down the Lixes though. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, the Air Force got taken out there by uh, by Purple, by AKM. And all the licks is going down. And this guy is basically nothing. Benz is screwed. Uh, let's see. Benz is level 3. <laughs> just reached level 3. He can still spend the I general points. Are you sure it's not Pablo uh, in disguise? <laughs> what? Playing for Fury? <laughs> no, playing Lixus. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> uh, he loves his Lixus, doesn't he? Fury already trying to expand, but I think he's going a little too soon here because he's also getting attacked up north. Uh, does he have a palace? He has a palace. He doesn't have rocket buggies, though. A bit weird. But yeah, for the rest, there's not that much to say about this map. Um, generally, if you have, like, a map edge, it's better to avoid water. So, like, this is technically water. I know it's lava, but it's still considered water, right? Uh, and that is yeah. because it's fun to send, like, a, a, a worker bike over the cliff or a Jarman bike over the cliffs uh, to go along the back and then try and steal a dozer or something. That's always fun. That's always nice. Uh, so, generally, if you have water, put it maybe a bit further back. Or a bit further to the front, like one or the yeah. other. So you, a bike can still go in and out. I think that that really matters. We, we snakes, we love having bikes everywhere. Yeah, just you know, more ways for the player to play. Essentially, that's that's sort of it. That yeah, tends to work that, well. That is what we love. Definitely, I do. Having a saboteur sneaking on the mountains, disabling power. Whoa, nice. <laughs> yeah, Fury is going to lose this foothold here. I think. But yeah, what this map does nicely is you have the two oils and the supply. And then you can choose to go for two extra oils or two extra supplies or one extra oil and supply. You have the option to go for extra and more. And now you already have that thing of like, oh wait, I can attack this guy because he's very close to me. Like straight away, she's very nice on this map. She's very good. I love it. Yeah. No, I think, uh, I think this is a good one. Um... Yeah, regarding regarding actual improvements, though, I think also this like this is very narrow stuff, and sometimes like Humvees start traffic jamming over here. So if this was just a bit bigger um, for the oil section there, and wait, what do I have selected there? Probably a Spectre or something. What do I have selected here? What the hell? Oh, it can be a smoke. I think those can be uh, selectable. <laughs> huh? Is that for players as well? I've never noticed this. Or is it because I'm observer? I can maybe see. I think it. all players can. Really? I've never noticed this. <laughs> Generally, if you have a decorative object, let's say it's the smoke, right? Uh, make sure it's unselectable because it's like you know a little, yeah, a little weird. Plus, it'll show like a health bar, and I was like, wait, what's over there? So it can also <laughs> be a bit confusing for for players because everything has a health bar in this game. So you know, even trees. Okay, trees don't, but everything else. <laughs> Green says GG oh. and is getting eaten up here by AKM as well. So AKM is actually doing pretty well. Uh, Fury is being beaten up by Orange. So now AKM literally can sit back and chill. Like, he can sit back and chill. Fury is not going to be expanding to the right. Um, let's see. AKM is well, still one making extra units, though. One extra thing that might be interesting for people is when you use civilian units, think about what kind of civilian units you want to have there. Um, because you have buildings that have a lot of health, like just normal structures. You have buildings that almost have no health, like the uh, little grass huts. You have buildings that can do damage when you kill it, like the tower. Like when the tower falls down, kills the building straight afterwards, stuff like that. You, you might want to think about what kind of building you want to use there as well. Yeah. Um, or if you have, you have like two, so, um, 
two bunkers that look exactly the same. But one can be garrisoned, the other one cannot. And one, if you kill it, it actually is a giant green chemical cloud on the ground, the other one does not. So you need to be careful of what kind of buildings you put on the map uh, as well. Just yeah. a quick reminder there. And uh, aircraft carriers, make sure they're not capturable. You know, things like that. <laughs> yes, because I will fully abuse them at all times. <laughs> yeah, because wasn't there wasn't there a map? Um, was it Melting Snow, the map, where you could, with a neutron shell new cannon, you can hit the battleship and then you can capture it? <laughs> I think, yeah. It doesn't do any damage, but uh, there are battleships that can do damage. And if you capture those, you can actually blow up in Drummond's entire base and you can't do anything against it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh, also, um, I think I might want to... You know what? No, never mind. I, I also have on my channel a bunch of world builder tips. They're actually as a playlist. So if you go to my channel, and you go playlists, uh, it says world builder tips. Yeah? There's one map I want to check out. Okay. Rag map Australia. Yeah, but that one has issues, no? No, no. Yeah, it, it's because of the issues I want to show you. It is a it is a map. It looks it looks decent. Uh, it could be a lot better. Uh, but it has some major issues with dropping uh, doses and dragon tanks and stuff like that. Um, so let's say you want to do a drop to a, to a guy and there are random islands or mountains on the map. Uh, let's say and you, let's say you put the Comanches all the way in the corner of the map, you, um, like, uh, above the water, because you actually want to make it uh, go drop very low uh, to ground, like at the water, like so glides across the water and then evacs at the closest edge of the playable map. In that map, it doesn't always do that. It actually, there are a few places on the map with small little mountains in the water that actually, um, we can actually drop on them. Oh. And after you drop on them, you can actually drive into the water with those units and kill everything else. But they don't want to drop on the island, they actually want to drop on the actual playable map. But because they uh, didn't really uh, manage the map that well, it is like that annoying. But Yeah, that is actually something that I don't think... Maybe I... Does it even say in the fine print that there is something known as penalty points? Um, yeah. Um, does it we say had it last year. We had it last year, and we had it the year before, but I don't know if it's actually mentioned in the fine print. I think I need to add that. Uh, but basically, we have something called penalty points, which, uh, which is when something happens that is just unforgivably bad, um, that we literally need to punish the map. So we're saying something like... Um, I don't know, if you destroy a particular building, the game crashes. Like, something like that. Uh, you know, so it, it tends to be more on the extreme sides. Or, like what you're say like what Goldfish is saying, you can do something... Uh, okay, probably that would get maybe one penalty point. Um, but we're saying, like, serious problems, they get punished. So, especially things like game crashes or, um, you know... So, mappers will have to be a bit careful as well. You've got to do your own testing. We play test the maps, but we are not literally there for the purpose of making sure that your map doesn't cause problems. You're still going to play test it yourself, play against hard army here, there, and some stuff. Um, but yeah, so there, there is that. Uh, I'm guessing if there is something where it's obvious that there's something exploitable, so if uh, these islands are obvious that you can land on them and it's obviously going to be used for exploiting, then yes, it would be something that gives a penalty, uh, penalty point. What do you think? Yes, uh, I think something like that should happen. Uh, we did it last year as well, and there are a few maps that got it that, um, like, if we say something, we, most of the time we, we'll point something like that out, but not all the time. We can be something as well. Uh, but just make sure there are no um, unit modifications, there are no drops you can do on the island, they make sure there are no random buildings that you're not sure if they are garrisonable or if they explode, yeah. it becomes a giant gas cloud. Like. Stuff like that, it needs to be sure what it is. Because um, it has something unexplainable, or it's like you don't really know what's going on there. Yeah, Not I, the best. I, I think I remember, because I'm trying my best to think of when there was a penalty point that was given. Uh, last year, I think there was one, uh, which was that somebody had built, like, somebody had the, the uh, that rocket from the first. GLA mission Bike. in zero hour. Yeah, the Baikonur rocket thing. You could capture that and that actually counted as a building or something along those lines. I think it was that. And basically, you couldn't kill the player because it was set to indestructible. So, 
basically, the moment a guy captures that, he cannot die. So it's like, yeah, we we punish that kind of stuff because uh, what if we didn't catch that? You know what I mean? It's it's like a game breaking bug slash problem. Uh, those kind of things, yeah, they get punished. So to kind of give you guys an idea of of how that works, the penalty uh, system. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll update the um, the fine print and add it in because I think I forgot to add uh, that. Same is for the aircraft carrier. It yeah. also counts as a building. Yeah, yeah. So if you put an aircraft carrier and a Black Lotus from a distance can capture it, yeah, if you send us to that in the final version, that's going to be a penalty point because it's like, a, no, dude, you can't have that stuff. And it's only because we're paying attention and we find it that, you know, we, we can sort of intervene and be like, hey, this needs to get fixed. Yeah, the thing is, we know this stuff. We know. We know. An aircraft carrier is damn OP. It spawns infinite raptors. You can even land your auroras on it. If you're a super weapon channel, you capture that thing. You can even use that as your temporary airfield for your auroras. It is actually possible, all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, not the best to have it on the map. Yeah, and the thing is, if you have your first version of the map and you show us and it's got an aircraft carrier, the very first thing we'll say is, dude, are you sure it's not capturable? Like, don't worry, we're not gonna. We're only going to give penalty points when we see something in the final version of the map that receives, uh, like that we receive. So, if the first version you fill it with aircraft carriers and we say, "Dude, get rid of the aircraft carriers," and then the next version you remove them all, it's not like you're gonna get a penalty point. That's not how that works. It's literally just the, only the final version of the submitted maps. Uh, or the latest version, let's put it that way. The, the, no, the last one you send us, that is the one that's going to get graded. Anything else is not getting graded. We're just giving feedback on how you can improve it more. Wait, I have a few more things. So, you can actually... There are a few things we don't really like to see. First of all is um, just supply crates um, being dropped on the ground. You can actually remove them with a the scaffold. People don't know it's there because they're not visible in the fog of war. So we don't really want that. We, we yeah, don't want that true. at all on the map. Um, Free money, even if it's two hundred dollars, it like gives an unfair event for those who know the map and who don't know. The other thing is, there's actually a, a thing in the map that gives you two free supply as uh, crusader tanks if you drive over them. We don't want to give people free tanks if they drive over a specific crate, because there's actually a crate in the game where you drive over it, you actually get free tanks. We don't want that either. Yeah. We don't want people getting free tanks for for nothing, for no reason. And the last thing is, don't put anything. Related to the army you can capture. Don't put in a yeah. supply, a dozer, a tank, even just a death tank that you don't capture. Don't don't put that in a map. We 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 gave it as feedback a last time. It were like pages as civilian uh, pages in the middle of the map and the outside of the map. It looked like it was actually somebody's defense. So people were like, oh wait, the defense there. I can attack with my air units. Well, yeah. it was just a civilian and didn't do anything. So those kinds of things you need to keep it in mind to not put it in the map. Yeah, and that's why I think this uh, this feedback session thing will be so useful because a lot of mappers will not realize that it's something that's a big deal to players, and it's like, well, if it's such a big deal, I'll just remove it, you know. And and that's that's about it. Glitchy gamer says Crusaders for everyone. Yeah, man. Hooray! No, that that, that crate <laughs> that crate thing exists, and it looks very ordinary. But yeah, it is it is called Crusader Crate or something, or Free Crusader or Two Crusader yeah, Crate. Crusader Crate, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So um, you 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 won't miss it. It's not a oh whoopsie! I stumbled and fell, and now everybody has a hundred crusaders. It's not also. <laughs> wait, there's actually a few more. Th there's one major thing I need to say. Don't mm -hmm. put any unit in that it's capturable. If like y you might not think it is capturable, but you can actually a neuter shell it. You can capture it, and then you have a nuke tank. Yeah. It's stuff like that. You might not think about it. it's capturable. It's actually capturable. So there's like a nuke truck. It is just a villain. Uh, you can actually empty it out with neutral shell, take it, and then you can actually use it to uh, to evacuate someone's base or whatever, and boom, army is gone. Stuff like that just is actually in the game. That is possible. Just make sure you don't abuse it. Also, no stealth detection units on the map. That is civilian, please. Yeah, that's another thing, because it kind of makes everything bork out and, and stuff like that. Nice anthrax there by uh, Fury. I am delayed. I cannot see. <laughs> I'm streaming. Wait, am I not streaming? No. <laughs> I thought I was streaming on Discord. No, you're not. Oh. Uh, when you said golf is natural, uh, I experienced it. I bugged out the game too much. I know all the bugs. Um, same with using bridges. Bridges is fun. 
but it's very bulky, buggy, um, abusable. You can drive off a bridge with a doze if you want that. Lol, get uh, wrecked. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Some uh, uh, killable. Some bridges can actually die, make it impossible that area. Uh, so far, that's does that actually anymore. work? Does that that yeah. game mechanic? There are a few bridges that can die. Do you know which ones? Because I haven't a clue. Uh, I can test whenever they. they uh, but whenever they, they get nuked, we'll know something, <laughs> something like that. I mean, you can always add a dam and add a wave to it, kill the dam, and boom, the bridge is gone. Anyways, uh, but that works for every single bridge. That works uh, on every yeah, bridge. Uh, almost every bridge, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there are many things you have to keep in mind of, and um, yeah. So any civilian thing that is capturable or, or scouting or looks like uh, it can be of a player, it's just don't. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm thinking about jumping into the next match. What do you think? Because these guys will be uh, a while, I think. Yes, it's Fury, anyways. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I thought Fury would win this a lot sooner than he, you know. Okay, now we see some progress, I think. This Humvee army had to die, and now it's dying. I mean, Fury could just uh, attack from the other side, <laughs> forcing the entire army to go back. I mean, Fury's got more than double the income, um, you know. If Fury doesn't win this, can we all, all just call him Big Noob? <laughs> he says, we will be done soon, Leggy. Don't worry. Remember how he was saying before he wasn't listening in on the stream? <laughs> he is. He is. Uh, but yeah, there are a few bugs uh, related with maps, with uh, Chinook drops, combat dropping buildings outside the map, uh, and all that kind of stuff. There are stuff like that. If it's just minor, we just tell you it's not easy, no not big deal. But if it's a major bug, we, we have to give penalty points if that's a final version. Yeah. But no worries. I will I, I will do my best to look at all the maps and tell if those bugs are there that you don't know. Because I'm quite expert at it. Yeah, it's true. Goldfish will find the bugs. You make the map. I, I, I still let, let the Kaleo, uh keep working on his maps because I keep bugging them out. Oh my he god, goes, his Moab got killed. <laughs> and he goes crazy because of it. He Damn. goes crazy. He makes map for years now. And he goes crazy each time I find the bug on his map. Yeah, I think Fury's going to start the final push now. I mean, I would say it become time. Yeah. Mind you, he's playing well. I mean, he's doing what he should be doing. He's going for the secondary eco. He's got all his arms dealers nice in a circle. Two tunnels there in case one of the tunnels gets destroyed. So he's playing very well. I you, think... you know what I'm missing? AK-47s. AK-47s for everyone! <laughs> but yeah, whatever map there is, I will bug it. Just so you know. GG. GG's, man! Fury did good. Yeah, he did well. Nicely played. Whoa, look at those Comanche getting fucking shredded. It is not easy. <laughs> Quads OP, man. Quads OP. Uh, nice. GG. GG, go right, play so, um, Volcano Rush, we did Mortal Temptation. Um, we did. I think the only map is... I think Jungle Thunder, right? Yeah. Because the stream's been going on for a while, so I don't want to start wrapping things up. Uh, but yeah, so we're let's do let's do Jungle Thunder. I mean, you can always uh, take a terrible map and uh, explain that as well, like Australia. Okay, so this is uh, an eight-player map, so we need three letter names. I mean, seven-player map, so we need three letter names. Yeah. Also, one extra thing I forgot to mention. Yeah. That is probably the most important one of all. Mm -hmm. If you have a map like Twilight Flame, where you move your units around. And it creates massive lag spikes because of waypoint bugging. Yeah, we will not really appreciate it. Yeah, but for free for all maps, you shouldn't even have such a problem in the first place, I think. It'll be pretty yeah, weird if you somehow create a system where there's waypoint lag for free for all. Just in case you don't know what it is, um, just start up um, Twilight Flame. Try to move your units from top left corner to bottom uh, left corner, and you will instantly feel what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, it's true. But for free-for-all maps, that shouldn't happen because a good free-for-all map should have that ability to, uh, you know, maneuver around easily around True. mountains and whatnot so you shouldn't have the ability to create waypoint lag like how you have it in twilight flame it just shouldn't be possible but there's so much things we can mention it's actually quite insane i know man we're like walking wikipedias for the game yeah it's like uh, and some things people don't even realize is uh be careful of usa supplies be careful of usa there, supplies there are two things that can happen with usa supplies mm -hmm. either the, the crates drop um, are bugging out, are not landing on the drop zones. That's one. Second is the planes coming from the wrong direction of the map. <laughs> if the planes go, if, uh, if you if you have a place in your base where you build a, a drop zone and uh, the planes actually come from the enemy base, that supply is most likely completely useless. Because that player will just have some air defense and all the planes that should drop money will never drop money. True. The same is with um reinforcement pads i think yeah don't but... add those in the map don't add those in the map well if you put if you put those in only put in one for the whole map like don't put more oh yeah, insta -shock... Are fine insta shock arena i didn't show uh i wouldn't yeah. mind showing that one as well but let's do jungle thunder first um because i don't want to yeah. miss out for a kill repair base are fine but reinforcement pads the issue is one army gets toxin tractors the other one gets assault troop crawlers and the other one gets demo vibes, which is not allowed in Pro Rules. Yeah. So I, I think you see my issue there is the one gets $600 worth of tanks, the other one gets 2400 bucks worth of tanks. Yeah. No, that's true. Now, generally, you don't really see them either, but I mean, it depends on the situation, I guess. I mean, in most cases, yeah, just avoid it. But anyway, let's look here. We have a normal GLA for Mr. Egg. And below him, we have another Air Force. Oh my god, so many Air Force. The, fu the funny thing is, the more repair base, the better. Let me do I, the, I love the stacking armies, ability. <laughs> Let me do the armies. There's Fury for Tank General. So, you know, he's probably not going to make it. We got Fury Tank again. <laughs> normal GLA here for AKM. Uh, we have... Damn it, I missed it. Demolition for Pink, who is pink. Also very Something. convenient. Uh, we pink have pink. Allah as Cyan. And we have Ben in the green here as a demo. Right, and this one's super web. Right, right, right. Anyway, so this is the map where the guy spent a lot of time trying to find the perfect lighting conditions for the game uh, for a night-themed map. And it is this one. Yeah. So, guys, everybody watching, I've... first question, can you see everything okay? Or would you say this is too dark? Just give your honest I... response. Let's see. I still remember the first version where it was way darker and it was raining and, uh, and it was lightning. Yeah. It was almost not visible. You can make this map a little bit more darker, I think it will still be alright. But too dark is not good. You need to see what's going on. <laughs> that is a thing. Yeah. Also, Bud Leakers asking a question. This planes always come in from the closest map order. How would an enemy base be in the way of that? Um, the thing is, if you have a base, uh, if you have the players um, in a way, where if you have orange base, let's say orange. Um, let's say if the base, if orange base was a little bit more downward. Um, well, actually, the closest edge of the map would actually be at the yellow side. If you then build the supply where the planes come from his direction, it will be bad. Um, there were definitely seven and eight player maps that were having issues with that uh, in previous world builders. Six and five players should have less issues with that, but it was still an issue. Um, so just a reminder that. Keep in mind of where the planes will come from, wherever you place drop zone in your base. Yeah, I think we only had it one time where it was a visible problem, and that was a map that did not win. It was a six-player map, if I recall. Uh, and what they did is they basically, like how you have this wall thing, right? So imagine this, but then like three times bigger. So it, there was this big wall, and inside that wall was your base. But you could drive around it, like over here. You could drive here uh, with tanks, whatever. So in this instance, if the guy had a drop zone in the middle of his base, the supply plane would come in from here, and if you have anti-air from the enemy over here, you can literally intercept all incoming supply planes, and the guy couldn't, like, you couldn't make any money. Um, we didn't actually see that happening, 
Uh, but it was clear that that was a problem that could happen on that map, which is, yeah, it's something you've got to keep in mind. So probably it would have been better if he didn't have this wall and just allow the USA to, like, come downhill here and just protect this area to make sure the supply planes could arrive. So, you know, there's that. I love how the Air Force is dying. Poor Air Force, Poor Air Force. Man. Poor Air Force. Nobody likes an Air, Air Force. Force. Air Force getting bullied. I know, man. Sure, it's doing good. Though. It's doing good. It's doing great. Uh, Bud Licker says it's not dark at all, and uh, Hassan says it's okay. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think this is probably the closest we're gonna get to a night-themed map that works. You know, it's uh, it's good. We got the little like arms dealer with the lights and stuff because it's the night-themed models. Um, and yeah, I would, I, say, I would say this is all right. One thing that I do like, though, personally, is that you have some parts where there's lighter textures. Like, look at the contrast. You can clearly spot this gap tank over here. There's no way you're going to get, like, confused quickly scanning or flying over a base. Same with the dragon tank. It just sticks out. But you do have sometimes, like, some parts where you have the trees and the darker textures where it starts to get a little bit difficult to see. There is a, there is a, a 2v2 map, an official map, I think, that's quite dark. But it's all snowy, so it's still alright because you can still see whatever is going on. Um, because of how light white is, yeah, white, white is, you know, very bright. Um, even if it's dark, you can clearly see what's going on, which is very good. Uh, which could work if you go want to make a little bit darker map than this. You can, but use the lightest textures possible then. If you go for dark green grass and stuff like that, uh, uh, or concrete, it can be very difficult to spot where your units are. Yeah. Well, I'm looking around. I'm trying to find something that, to me, is, like, a bit hidden away. But, uh, for example, a worker, if you have a worker and you place it, like, over here, the combination of how many trees there are, uh, as well as the lighting, it does slightly blend the units a bit more with background. I think it'll be hard to spot. Um, but, but that's I all right. It's trees. You still like, can see it on the minimap and stuff like that, and it's a way of playing. So I Yeah, true. Trees are, the, uh, trees are fine. Trees are fine. GG Easy says, I think it's perfect. Could be a bit darker. Uh, I don't think it should be darker. I'll be honest. I don't think it should be darker. It can um, be, but it shouldn't be. Margaret yeah. says, lighting is good and my screen is trash. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's that's a very good answer there. You know, there, there are also a few trees in the game that can burn. Some can burn, some cannot. Um, imagine you have a giant line of trees that you can burn from one side to the other side of the base. Uh, I usually burn people's buildings with that. <laughs> What? Yeah, it's true. It's that a, actually deals with It's something damage. you might never you never think about, but that actually can happen. If you have a giant line of trees that can just one make and burn someone's command center up, I mean, it's a small issue. Um, but regarding <laughs> this map, uh, some of you might be wondering why didn't it win? Uh, because this is not one of the winning seven player free for all maps. Uh, it actually came pretty close, but uh, one of the judges spent a lot of time uh, doing a lot of measuring and it was clear that the map was not balanced. So, uh, like, this guy, for example, would reach this oil very quickly, but uh, this guy would reach this oil, it would take forever. You know, something like that it was. Like, a lot of measuring happened, and there were some serious big gaps in, uh, like, how fast can it, like, how quick can you get an oil, Derek? Uh, also, the map size wasn't exactly great. Like, some bases were bigger than others. Um, I don't remember which ones it was. I think this was one of the bigger bases, and where was a smaller base? I think, was this a smaller base? I'm not sure. Um, it's not as clear now, because I'm just quickly looking over it, but um, the judges actually measure the spaces and things like that, and they verify everything's correct, and then they try it with playing. So, like I said, they just get a red guard, they try and capture an oil, they try and capture the other oil, they check, and they check at different positions. Is it around the same time? Because if you have one position where it takes you 10 seconds less to capture an oil, you want to be in that position, right? When you play competitively. And that's what we don't want. We need it to be still good and stuff like that. Um, another thing, in my opinion, is the mountains. It lost some points, if I recall. Like, you got some texture issues here. Like, if you see this, like, I'm sure you guys can see this. Like, th this ain't right. You gotta, you gotta fix this. You're gonna lose points if your textures look like this. Um, and also, like, the mountains, there were some uh, things that could be improved. Things like this yeah. is cute, this is cute, but, like, there were still things that could be improved. And if they were improved, it possibly would have won. The, the leg of a little bit of textures on the mountains, in a way, as well. Yeah. Also... They are a little bit uh, the same. Also, uh, if you look at certain texturing jobs, 
they're absolutely phenomenal. Like, if you look at how you have this sort of sand texture, then with a little mountain and it transitions to the sand, uh, you have like some really nice, like this, I think looks so nice over here. But then here we get a very rough transition suddenly to this dark soil. Uh, you got to be careful with the transitions. If the transition is too much, too quick in one go, uh, it can sort of shatter that nice effect that's been built up elsewhere. Also, got some texture bugs here. Look, you can see the texture goes just straight lines. <laughs> that's the texture bug. Got to fix those or you're going to lose points. Um, so, yeah, this but, one came pretty but, close to winning, if I recall, though. But right now, don't really wor worry about too much of the texturing. Uh, we can give you some little tips and useful tips on how to improve that and how to make sure you don't have these weird texture bugs. Yeah, but uh, that, that will happen. be at a later stage. Like now, at this point in time, it's about getting the balance right, getting the map layout and getting it in a balanced way. And then the decorative parts, that comes later. Like, don't start with that. Like this, for example, in my opinion, this looks ugly. Like just having from a very nice sort of dusty sand to immediately like this this very watered soil to a very dark blue water. It's too much. There's too much transitioning going on in, in colors and everything. It should be a little more like casual and oh. stuff. But with the grass it works, but with the dirt it doesn't really work. Yeah. So everything is uh, is going to be looked at. Everything's going to be judged. But of course, the most important is map balance. That is that is just it. You need to get your map in a good state that whenever people play it, that they say things like what Goldfish said about Volcano Rush, that they say, I think this map is very balanced. You know, then, then you're going down the right route. Instantly, you only see Volcano maps. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> oh, map to another window. Volcano, that's what I need. Uh, Bud Licker says, is there a way to make a map completely symmetrical? Uh, yes and no. Yes, because there is a coordinate system in the World Builder, which I will also discuss uh, on Sunday, um, which you can do using the waypoint system. So the waypoints, when you place down a waypoint, there's something called a waypoint, you can just place it down. Uh, that works with the coordinate system, and you can use that to measure things. Um, but... To answer your question, it's also a no. You can't make it perfectly symmetrical because you're gonna have to do every single thing manually. There's no copy-paste feature. It doesn't exist. Every single texture, every single tree, every single thing you see has been manually placed by the mapper. The whole thing. All areas, all sides, yep. everything. There are tools to make you be able to place like five trees at the same time or five different trees at the same time. Yeah, but sort of. Yeah, there's um, um, there's a tool. I will show that as well. You can like click and drag a box, and then in that box, randomly five trees will spawn or something. Um, but I can I can already tell you, most of the very dedicated mappers they don't even use that. They will hand click each tree down the way they like it. <laughs> That's just how it works. Uh, I know says symmetrical uh, symmetrical maps are possible uh, with five or more players. It would, wait, it would always have to be a circle, unless it's a player. Yeah, that's sort of uh, an issue as well. That is a bit of an issue. It's, um, you're absolutely right. It needs to be a circle. And that kind of brings that problem that Goldfish was mentioning earlier as well. If you have like, a, like even like this, right? This map, this whole section is dead to the map. There's, it's, it doesn't do anything. This section, what I'm highlighting, right? It's off the battlefield but it does give an advantage to an Air Force general. They can hide their self command sheet here, for example, you know? Um, in a four-player map, that's a perfect square, you can't hide your self command sheet somewhere, casually, whether it's in the back of your own base or whatever. You can't, not really, you know? But here, you can easily hide it off the map, essentially. You know that no one is gonna kill them here. The only way they would die is if somebody launches a freaking nuke in this corner. That's just not gonna happen. So. There is that, and then sometimes when the cliffs are a bit too wide, like here they're not, here they're very much not wide, but let's say they were wide, you can sneak those stealth Comanche all across the map and uh, harass somebody. But here, but, uh, it doesn't have that, and it's quite nice in my opinion that it's not too much. See Blue's base and then see Pink's base. See what I mean with uh, Comanche being able to go in the back of the Pink's base, but not in the Blue base. Yeah. Um, that is something you have to look forward to. It's like, do it for all players or do it for none players. Most of the time it will be for all players, but all players will have a uh, will have Comanche being able to go in the back. Um, but not for one, for a few players, yes, for a few players, no. 
because that will create a, an imbalance for um, possible leaks, leaks attacks or Comanche attacks or drops that otherwise would not have been able to get there. Yeah, that's true. And that's just one of those things that unfortunately we have to live with. Um, but it also, I guess, depends on how the map is set up uh, that you would see that happening more often or not. So in Coral Islands, you can just tell that map when you have Lixes, oh man, you are happy. It, when you have Stealth Comanche, oh, you are happy. On a map like this, I think there's already so much going on in like the middle that the Stealth Comanche won't have the same level of power uh, as compared to on Coral Islands. Because in Coral Islands, you're more interested in killing the player and sort of expanding in that sense. Whereas here, there's already more resources in the middle, more things going on there. Um, it's open battlefield, so you can have actual fights here as well, uh, or actual big fights with big armies. So there's more attention here in the middle than, you know, hey, let's fly around the edge of the base. Yes. So even though it's a problem, there are ways you can still sort of mitigate it and reduce it a little bit. If we could, we, we, we would make uh, the map round, but we cannot. <laughs> we cannot make it round, we cannot change stuff. We, um, it's sad, but it's true. Man, lots of disconnections. Now Mr. Med disconnecting. I think every match we've had one person disconnecting, I think. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm one to talk. I disconnected. I lost power randomly on my PC. It just shut down. I'm like, oh, this is not good. And I did so yesterday. Yeah. Guys, how's the how's the stream quality for those of you who selected 4K? Is it looking nice and crisp? Nice and detailed? Because that, that might be why. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm trying out the new uh, AV1 encoder, which hopefully that was not the reason it, like, you know, my PC shut down. Could be, actually. I don't know. I still have to investigate and do some uh, research as to what the hell was going on there. Nothing is more scary than Windows updates and driver updates. Lol. It's sad, but it's true. <laughs> Definitely for a streamer, nothing is worse than those. Something will, will mess up. You just don't know what. It's I like, surprise! <laughs> I don't think the guys realize it's no rules. Nobody realizes, really. No, because... Only Fury, but, but Fury is uh, it's a true snake. He's a snake, like, man. He, he will not say anything <laughs> unless it's in his, in his advantage. He's a snake. I mean, he did learn from the past, didn't he? Yep, yep. But one thing that I like, for example, on this map um, is it's very clear if you see this that the mapper had in mind that you can send a combat bike up here to the oil. I like that. I like that very much. I also uh, love the way you can build a Patriot there as well to attack uh, the enemy base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it sort of opens up the way a little bit. It's cool. I think it's cool. Um, yeah. It can also be annoying, like let's say a player's base is smaller and, you know, tighter together and then you have that, that you could like essentially shut down a guy. You know what I really love is the way that supply, uh, that oil is placed. It's like not facing any bases. It's like they have to go through the middle and then go back to take that. It's like the one little thing that it actually is um, splitting up you between the enemy, but also is a possible thing you can capture, you can take, you can take to your own advantage. Which I like a lot. Um, it's also very creative. You don't see that often in other maps. Uh, one thing you can, you might be able to add in a map like this, like maybe add like a secret passage for some units. Let's say a battle bus can go all the way in the back, or maybe some uh, some oil uh, somewhere in the back of the map. Which could work. You know, small passageways. You, if you have mountains, anyways, you can make some small passageway between two bases. Say, oh, it can be small, but there's an extra oil there. Oh, there's an extra oil. You can do something like that. Yeah, I don't know. It's something unique. It's something unique, but personally, it has to work. Personally, it has to be fair. Yeah, personally, I, I would say avoid small passageways. I find them more annoying than fun because, you know, a Gile will just put one demo trap and that's it. Something like that's this true. with the bike, I think it's a cool idea um, because it's sort of, it, it just kind of is a hint to the player saying, hey, why don't you send a bike? <laughs> you know, even though if this was the same kind of mountain style, you could still send a bike. It just, I don't know, it feels like, I don't know, it's cool. But if you have small passages and things, eh, generally I'm not a big fan of that stuff. Um, because it's always going to be the same story. It's going to be one Dragon Tank doing it, or in the early game, one Technical is going to go through it. It's just going to be annoying and a pain. And then the GLA can defend with one freaking Demo Trap, and it's it, he's, he's fine. He's safe, you know? So, yeah. I don't know, but that's my opinion. Goldfish apparently likes passages, and that's the thing. It doesn't even really, like, I will give my feedback, Goldfish gives his feedback, but at the end of the day, it's the judges who decide what makes most sense, and, you know, it's not like 
It's not like I can be wrong. Of course I can be wrong. Goldfish can be wrong as well. But we're just giving the most important feedback from our perspective, and then it's up to you, the mapper, to decide what you want to do with that. But of course, highly recommend you follow the feedback that we give, you know? But sometimes we give conflicting feedback and then you just choose, you know? That's, that's, that's basically what it comes down to. Yeah, exactly. Um, but in general, we love seeing new maps. We love giving feedback. If you have a map and, and you, um, you just want some feedback, um, you can ask any mapper, really. They want to help. You can just ask them in Discord what they think what you might have to add or what not to add. Um, most map, most people are, are uh, happy to do that. Even the other map makers might actually be uh, loving to, get, uh, to share some uh, ideas with you. I'm yeah. actually going to try myself to make a map. Um, I might be able to, I might be a free for all player, but I do not play every single map. Uh, I do not play um, every type of map. I do not. Whoa. I'm not a mapper myself, so all these things as well. You have to, game crashed. You have to, uh... Fury says, man, screw this tank shit, and the game crashed. <laughs> Was that Fury on purpose? <laughs> but yeah, so even though I might make a map myself, I would just be there for the fun anyways. Um, but still, I would give honest feedback. Whether you're asking me for feedback, I will watch your map. I will give you feedback on the map. Um, if you want me to do big... Uh, looks at the map, you know, check the bugs. You know, I do that as well, if I have time for it. General's um, got talent judges, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, but yeah. I know there's no bribing judges, because they are anonymous. Yes. So, let me see. Um, some people also said some other things. Uh, we get the stream in VP9 anyway. Either in 4K or 4240p. Yeah, but you get more bandwidth if you select 4K. So even though you watch on 1080p screen, let's say, it will still look better if you select 4K because that's for some reason how YouTube wanted it. Um, so there's there's that. Uh, but yes, the quality is actually still a bit better from compared to how I had it before. So yes, it, it does make a difference watching 4K and with the AV1, it's a bit better. It's a little bit better. Pret sees it. If, I don't know if Pret is still there. He's like, yeah, man, I see it. And I'm like, yes, yes, I know it's insane. Anyway. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, very detailed at 480p. Yeah, sorry, man, but... 480p. I've Rest been there. Peace, I've been there, man. I've been there. I can uh, least, I can relate. At least it's 4, 420. 420? You can have one, 144. <laughs> 420 blazes. No. Uh, <laughs> should players avoid using tech buildings, like placing hospitals, refineries, reinforcements pad, and artillery? Um, Those are fun, actually. Some tech buildings should be avoided. Uh, I, I do think that has to be said. Some tech buildings should be avoided, um, like the reinforcements pad. It should be avoided. Um, basically, because of what Goldfish already said, the whole, you know, infantry general gets a troop crawler worth 2,400, and toxin general gets a freaking toxin tractor. Great. You know, uh, that's sort of the thing. So don't put a reinforcements pad in every single player's base. You are immediately going to have us say, dude, no, don't do that. You know, also, that that's just one of those things that's just not balanced. Art artillery platforms are dangerous. They are might be fun, but are dangerous. So only place them at a location you think it might be good. Yeah. Don't just place them in the middle that can fire at supplies and stuff like that, because those are going to be annoying. Yeah. Um, but buildings like hospitals... Not really. Not many people use them. They are useful for for healing your units, uh, yeah, okay. uh, healing your infantry. Uh, but yeah, buildings like repair base, they, they are stackable. So the more you have, have the better it is for um, healing your units because they actually stack. But the issue with that is it actually gives two hundred XP each one you kill that is of the enemy. Yeah. But anyway, Let's let say me play uh, capture one. You can kill it. Let me do the armies. So we got Ben as super weapon general. Imagine On the armies. oh oh. Uh, I yeah, guess we're yeah. reing. For some reason, I don't have the texture. Uh, I gotta fix this thing in, in Gen Patch, man. I gotta fix it. Normally, <laughs> you don't have your own in my texture. own freaking map, the texture not showing. Uh, should I should I should I fix it right now while we're? Uh, should I? Black, the black box in the middle. Oh my god, man! Oh my god! Unbelievable! But now I can give you the guy feedback on your map. Yes. Yes, and that is wrong, and that is wrong, and that is wrong, and that is wrong, and it's really <laughs> Your map is trash. <laughs> uh, let's see, is the game going to work or not? What do we get from reinforcement paths if you're playing General Lang? Yeah, let's...
Hello? Can you still hear me? Goldfish. Hello? Very peculiar because it's literally when I close absolutely bonkers and then I can still hear goldfish going, Leggy? Leggy? <laughs> and I'm like, oh. can you hear me, fish? And I'm like, not getting a response. And I'm like, and Le then, no joke, my screens go black. And oh, I, Leggy. And then it you just shuts down. Something? So, yeah. I had the same issue a few days ago, you know, and it was with a driver's update. Oh my god. Oh my god, was it the exact same type of issue, like what I'm saying? Yes. I could hear you, you can hear me. Screen goes black and then everything dies. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Then I'll, I'll try. The issue updates. Yeah, I'll try an update as well then. But yeah, actually, that's a valid point. I need to. I should have a look to see if the drivers have a new update because I'm using the AV1. So I now have an experimental build from OBS Studio, which is my streaming software. Um, so probably now the graphics drivers will create all the patches for that, and they are all busy patching and fixing each other. Uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a valid point actually. Um, yes. Yeah, okay. If, if your stuff keeps crashing, blame the drivers. Or blame Jake, one of the two. Or Jake, it's probably Jake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to blame him yesterday, man. Yep, yep, yep. Screw that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he literally did us me. Yesterday. Anyway, uh, let me see if I can... Okay, so I, I installed my... Um, what do you call it? The map. The map texture yeah. thing. Uh, so let's try it again. <laughs> Hopefully the same people are yeah, yeah, going to yeah. join and it, it'll be nice and fast. Um, but yeah. Okay, so. Uh, what the fuck is AV1? It's cool, okay? I promise. But just not not this time. Might be the driver. I don't know whether it's AV1 or not. Uh, but AV1 is this uh, really fancy way of me uh, transmitting my video signal to you guys. I guess that's like a layman way of saying it. Uh, which is that... Normally, we have the old way of streaming, and this is like the new way of streaming, which is uh, basically I have to use a lot less internet for you guys to get actually a better picture than what you were getting before. That's basically what it is. So it's super duper fresh and new, like legit, it got released earlier this week for my streaming software. So that's how old, I mean, that's how new this stuff is. It's, it's, it's brand new, which basically is a software way of saying it can crash. So... Uh, you know. Were you going to say that you were old? No, I'm not old. Well, maybe I'm a little old. Doesn't matter. We're all old. We're all young. It, age is relative, I think. Well, <laughs> like, you know, uh, an ant that is only five days old is old. But, you know, uh, an elephant that is like 50 is young. I don't know. I don't know how old elephants get. But anyway. Oh, man, I still didn't install it properly. Damn it. Why, why I do this? But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to InstaShock Arena created by Legionnaire. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can do mapping as well. So for those of you who are like, oh, who's the guy who's going to show us mapping? It's the guy who made this map, okay? This map. So anyway, let me do the armies real quick. So we have a Toxin General here for AKM, which is uh, pretty yeah. nice. We have Laser General here for Fury. We have Normal GLA here for Pablo. Ooh, Pablo's playing, nice. Uh, we have Orange Toxin General for Egg. We have new general for Pinky Winky, and the blue player shift is a normal a US of A. Now, uh, go ahead, Fish. The floor is yours. First, first of all, I love the name Pinky Winky. Tell it to be. Yes. Yeah. Or am I just too old? Um, but first of all, is when you drive for the tank on the mountain, your tank dies. I mean, you're not supposed to do it, but I'm. I, I love my bugs, and it does. <laughs> well, in this map, you mean? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I yeah. basically, I basically <laughs> added an anti-exploit trick. So these mountains, yes, you can drive on them with a little exploit, but <laughs> this is where things are about to get insane. There are invisible CIA agents in this map hovering over the mountains, waiting for a unit to drive over them, and then those CIA agents that you cannot see will gun down that unit. So it's like, a, hey, don't mess with me. You can't just use this weird exploit that's in the game. Um, I went through a lot of trouble making that because I was convinced that if this was going to get played in a free-for-all tournament, that everybody would try that exploit. Hence why I spent so many hours trying to do it. And no. it does work-ish. So, you know, that's o why. Only I do it. 
Yeah, only fish does it, and he's like, lol. <laughs> I, d I don't like it. Yeah, but anyway. Um, so, fish, what's wrong with this map? Let's hear it. First of all, textures look good. Thank you. But, here's the but. But? You have to change it from the middle and the oil section so it's actually clear and visible yeah. what is where. Yeah. Because if you have no radar, you scroll around the map, you might get lost because everything looks the same. Yeah. So, basically what Fish is implying is you've got all this grass texture. Okay, this is a bug, don't worry about it. I'll fix that. Um, so you have all this, <laughs> like, grass over here, all nice. But then your base looks the exact freaking same. So basically Fish is like, you know, like you have sand here, for example. Why not make the whole base like a sand color and then keep the middle as grassy? Uh, that will just be more pleasing to the eye of the player. Uh, and it's easier to kind of feel where you are, but just based on the colors. I agree with Fish very much. It's definitely something that would improve this map. Okay, next point. Let's hear it. I love the damn tower. I love it. Yeah, the towers. They, 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 they're just too much fun. I they know. call, shoot me down, kill my command center, do it, do yes. it. You know, they actually have uh, uh, less health than the standard structure. I know. Like, uh, and then you see grass huts on the map, which have like no health at all. Yeah, it's true. They're just like, hey, it's me. Poof, dead. Yeah, that's why, I, that's why I put them in as well, because they're fun for like scouting and stuff, right? It is a shit like that, but it's quite funny. Um... What else? What else? One thing you might not know is between the two players, between two players, it's a supply. Um, on one side and the other side, uh, there is no, there is tower. There is tower. that's different. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's that's on purpose. That's on purpose. You what do you always create? What do you a think? A one v one between those players. And well, not necessarily. Basically, it was uh, it was done in a way to sort of keep an opening as well. So if you want to go to the middle, but the other guy has this, you can still go around and go to the middle this way. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. yes. It doesn't yeah. necessarily mean a 1v1, because look, it's only 15k here in the middle, which is not a huge amount, but it's, yeah, it's decent. Um, so it's not always something that everybody's going to fight over. At the same time, in the bottom, you have the oil. So, you know, there's that to fight over. How do commands in this place again? I need to know. Um, this is this is one Pinky Winky didn't sell, so it's quite uh, close-ish to the middle. Um, oh yeah, now I remember what I said to you last time. Um, what I once said to Legionary is actually to maybe switch around the command center and the supply. Um, the reason for that is so you can actually see the oil in the back of your base when you spawn in, so people instantly know when they don't know the map. Yeah, there's an oil there. True. That is one of the things I had. Um, yeah, so that's one of the things, I mean, this map is all right. It's fun. It, 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 it's a good map. It's a good map. One thing you, you, you might want to do is make it easy to see where the oil is. If you have an oil, like make it pop, like pop out. It, I have, I've played maps that I played and I was like, wait, there's an oil here. And yeah. this is one of those maps. It's like, wait, there's an oil there. It's like one of the things you, uh, you, you don't expect really, um, so that's something you might want to keep an eye on is like um if you place an oil in the base make sure it, it is visible yeah yeah that's true that's uh, a fair point that's a fair point that, that was one of the things i mean i, I love the commands and closer to the middle it's like probably to probably if i had to make some changes now i would probably change the supply docks to supply piles so at least when they're mined out you have this whole big place that you can move big armies through because right now you have those oils a bit in the way you have those supplies a bit in the way yeah also there is i think there's a thing if a supply reaches to zero you can actually remove it using a script yeah but, but that, that shouldn't... is an inconsistency though with other yeah. maps because it is yeah. all a normal thing that exactly so you shouldn't do that no i would say that probably the supplies should not be here but maybe a little bit further back like over here and they should be uh, small supply piles like maybe uh five small supply piles or something that's enough it's not enough it's not so many supply piles that you build two supplies Ooh. next to it but uh, or you make it so that in between the players uh you have one side where the supply dock is and you, the other side you can actually do where the grass hut is instead of the grass hut you can do the supply piles um and the other side you can do the oil so it's like rotating so the money's not in the middle and maybe you put a little bit of extra money yeah i tested that um when i was making the map i tested that originally this is where the supplies were didn't work 
um, because the USAs with their Chinooks, it was just, it was a nightmare. Uh, they would just get shot at from this whole section and it's, it was just not ah. fun to defend. If you commit to the middle, sort of, you know, you probably already have the oils as well if you're at the USA and building a supply here. So that's why it was, uh, it worked out better. Yes. Uh, but in general, uh, I love the black box. I, I, I really love the black box. Yeah, I don't know why. I need to I need to sort <laughs> out what the hell's going on. It's a gen patch <laughs> thing, man. But as far as I know, I fixed it. Um, but I still need to make some small changes to some of the uh, Maybe it's better packs. if you just remove the logo at all. Oh, so it's... man, the logo is pretty nice. I like it. It is nice, but yeah. uh, not everyone has gen patch or I will have a black box forever. True. True, but it's only a bit in that the middle, the, I guess. That is the only bad thing about having maps, uh, which got some textures and items. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Is whoever doesn't download the map from a gen patcher will have black box, unless someone transfers the map using Discord, I think, with the map uh, with the custom uh, textures file. Bud Liquor says, if you change this to small supply piles, wouldn't it be an advantage for GLAs? Uh, not really. If you put like eight small supply piles, then yes, they can build two supply centers and just double the mining speed. Um, but if it's just like four or five small supply piles, generally players don't bother getting to supply stashes. So then it's not like an army advantage. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, in in the chat. Who's saying it? Uh, nickname saying four small supply piles, 15k. So yeah, just four supply piles would actually be the exact same value as this. Um, I remember the reason I made supply docks of these uh, was because then if you're a USA and you're over here, you can literally just grab a Chinook and just long distance collect. And you don't have to keep paying attention whether the supply piles mined out because otherwise, if you have small, uh, four small supply piles, the moment one is finished, you have to go to your Chinook and tell them to collect from the next one. And like this, I was like, oh, you don't have that issue then if it's one supply dock. Um, but yeah, it, it's just in the way more than anything. The ability to not really cross the middle with a massive army, I don't know, it, it's a bit annoying in my opinion. But yeah, guys, from this map you can learn, you sh if you just see the mountain between them, they are... Shape-wise, they're, they're, they're nice, they're good, but also they have some nice rocks on it, uh, nice decoration, uh, plus it, or maybe some trees. Uh, let's say you have a ma uh, you, you, you want trees on the ground, but maybe you want some trees on the mountain, so to make it look decorative, maybe some bushes. Um, like in a way, like feel them like overgrown, because not every mountain in real life is just rocks. Um, so that's something you can also try to work with, which is very nicely done on this map, I have to say. Yeah, there's a, a lot of objects in this one. Um, and I don't know who it was. I think it was one of the modders, like, uh, I think it was Shockwave mod or Rise of the Red. I think it was Rise of the Red, uh, Rise of the Red mapper. He opened up the map and freaked out. He's like, oh my God, there's so many rocks and trees, you know? And he, uh, said like, hey, can we make a version of this map where we remove the logo in the middle, which I'm sorry if it's not showing for you guys today. Um, and he's like, I'm also just going to remove all the rocks and trees. And uh, he said, are you okay with that? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, I was actually commissioned to do this map. So that's why, you know, I want to keep the logo, which again, for some reason is showing for you guys, but I can fix that. Um, and also like, no, I like the rocks and trees. I think it's cool. But one thing that I wanted to make sure of is just to keep the battlefield clear. Okay. You don't have a ton of trees and a ton of rocks in your player base. It's all at the edges. It's all like away from, you know, it's, it's decoration. And that's something that players have to keep in mind as well. Don't make a freaking forest where players can build stuff because a guy will hide a worker and then some guy like x is going to be like, what the hell? I didn't see there was a worker there. And, you know, they'll get all pissy and shit. Like, you're going to have to have the actual fighting area it needs to be clear and overseeable and, you know, obvious. Yes. Um, also, for those guys who want to make me happy, play the few toilets on your map, man. Toilet. Oh my God! Yeah, you can you can uh, you can go up to four people in a toilet, right? No one. It's oh, one, one. Yes. You, you can have one person in a toilet and shoot out of it. You can shoot out of it. It gets like a little flag, so it's like a little Ford in a way. It has no health, but it's just fun. Yeah. But the best thing is, you drive over. Oh, like I know the best map for a prank map. Put an entire map with. with trees and every time you, you drive over a tree a train spawns and kills stuff oh yes i'm stupid okay don't blame me 
Congratulations, Mr. Pratt. Technically, Pratt? the missus and I got married. All right, nice. Congratulations. Oh, nice. Why didn't you invite us, man? Why didn't you ever come on? I, I expect her to be a wedding cake on the lamp party. Yes. Definitely. And it is a new new party during the lamp party. So, so what were your vows? Did you uh, tell her like generals inspired quotes like "Okay, okay, I will work." That that would that would probably be a good one. <laughs> uh, uh. Or just or just randomly meme it and shout "Tanks, build more tanks." Ah, <laughs> uh, greetings, Janetta. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, wipes up the the makeup on the face. Greetings, Janetta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What could go uh. wrong, right? What could go wrong? <laughs> Shortest marriage in history. <laughs> uh. Jamil says, nothing like Fortress Avalanche, 8-player. Oh, my God. I, I really don't like that map, Fortress Avalanche. It's the, so big, and there's so little money on it. He, Leggy, do you know there was a map from Tika Leo once? Um, it actually has, like, uh, little snow piles, and it actually is like an avalanche. Uh, it actually... Um, ever, if you fire, uh, shoot it or with a rocket, it actually moves down. And whatever comes in its path, it instantly kills. Yeah, and it could crash the game as well, no? Yeah, it could crash the game, it could kill whatever building it was. Uh, it was the weirdest thing ever. Uh, it's like, wait, what the hell is that? We shoot it, a entire base dies, every unit that passes uh, through it, it um, the entire game would instantly die, instantly get uh, get killed off. It was actually in a rank map um, as well. It's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, it's true. No, Stuff the, like that nobody knows about me. The, the problem, unfortunately, is that the amount of manpower involved in the Gen 2 map pack is very limited. So those maps don't get properly tested. Um, it's one of the reasons as well that the wrong Naval Port Reyes version snuck into that. Like, it's just very unfortunate. Um, and why Australia is a map? Yeah, Australia had so many problems. Like, the original version had blood in it, right? So if two soldiers shot at each other, you'd see, like, blood effects. And then those effects would carry on to the next maps and things like that. Like, there were a number of problems in that map, if I recall. But, yeah, they just, for some reason, weren't heavily tested. Big push here from Green. Oh, my God. Pablo showing his boss. Uh, let's see. Hello. Do they play this on EA Launcher or is there another way to play Zero Hour? Uh, yeah, you can get the game with the EA app. So that is uh, the Command & Conquer Ultimate Collection that you want. And then if you buy that, General Zero Hour is in there. And then you can get Gen Patcher, which will fix up your game so you can play online and start it on Windows 7. I mean, Windows 11, Windows 10 without any issues. Binky Winky got taken out. AKM got taken out. And I don't think that Mr. Egg is going to last that much longer either. Look at Pablo, man. Another bunch of buses ready to go. Let's go Angry Mobs here, though. That's pretty nice. Can you use invisible trains instead of uh, CIA agents to kill units on the mountain? I have no idea. <laughs> you can take the map and try it for yourself. Uh... Yeah, Pablo doing some very nice damage here. Yeah, Egg won't last that much longer. Let's see what's going on here in the base of Shift. Seems to be doing okay. Oh, Fish just messaged me. He said, my internet has had a little break there and I have to go eat anyway. So he said he's going to leave and have a bit of noms. We all know he's going to watch the stream, though. We all know it. Like, it's fine. I don't mind. We can enjoy some InstaShock Arena. But yes, so this is the uh, this is the map that I actually made uh, back in 2018, I think. Damn, a long time ago. Um, 
when I made this map, literally Defcon reigned supreme. This was before World Builder Contest 2020, so it was just the only free for all map. Six player was Defcon. It was just no questions asked. Defcon, maybe there would be an occasional lost host on Game Ranger who would put on Armored Fury. Uh, so I was like, let's change it, and I made this map with the idea of changing that. Uh, when this map was released, we also had some tournaments on it uh, and stuff like that. Personally, I like it. I like the map, but yeah, there can be some changes. Maybe I'll make some improvements and stuff. Um, Fury says, Leggy, move me to VC. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna see this game through and then probably call it. Uh, very unfortunate for you guys that uh, this isn't working. I'll probably fix this problem uh, with this black square uh, so I can show you guys what the map looks like on a Sunday so you get a better picture but basically it's like the grassy thing continues and there's a big instant shock logo over here which was um, uh, it was the guys who commissioned the map they paid me for it to uh, add the logo in and uh, hence why the map is also called instant shock arena and I was like yeah sure no problem but uh, yeah fun fact actually for those of you who are keen-eyed um, if you saw the announcement video of world builder contest uh, you would have noticed that at one point you saw the world builder Right, and you saw, you know, somebody making mountains. These were the mountains. This section, literally right here. Look, maybe some of you will spot that this was before just a plain white texture. Uh, but yeah, this is the finished piece, the finished part. So uh, that was actually a part of this map <laughs> that I showed because I actually recorded a lot of the footage of me making this map um, because I was like, shall I, rem uh, shall I upload it? Shall I do like a uh, like a fast speed up? And you can see everything that I'm doing. I spend a lot of time on this map, you know, the texturing, the trees, the everything. Probably put a few too many trees, but fuck it, I don't care, I like the trees. Uh, fish eating french fries again? Yes. <laughs> yes. Leggy, why don't you make more maps? Because they take really long to make. If you look at this one, how much time I spent on this, man. Uh, look at this. This was something I was pretty proud of. Look at this. Look how cute. Like a little... It looks like little stairs, but it's actually an amphitheater. Like like the Greek amphitheater thing. Uh, and I just use the corner of it, stick it out of the mountain, and I'm like, yeah, now it's stairs. Deal with it. I don't know. I thought it was fun. I had a, I had a lot of good times making little, you know, fun things like that. But uh, yeah, of course, this level of detail and amount of object placement is not what we're expecting for World, uh, World Builder Contest 2023, okay? Don't be like, oh my god, this is gonna take forever. No, 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 it's not, it's not what is required. Um, again, the most important thing is just map balance. We want more good, fun maps to play. And uh, it's not necessarily about looks. Looks play a part, but it's more like you just have to reach a certain threshold of, yeah, this looks all right, yeah, this looks good. You know, nobody looks at Defcon and says, oh my god, what an ugly map. It's still nice. Bud Licker says, everybody likes trees. Well, I like trees. Like, I, I don't know. I think this is really, like, cool stuff. And I tried some different texturing and stuff. So this is, um, when I say, guys, don't have random blobs for mountains. Like, I, I really try to, like, make some more dynamic things going on with the mountains. Like, actual little, like, sort of mountain tops things. Um, that's the kind of stuff we like to see. Like, don't just have just one big blob. So a blob would be something like this, right? This, you know what I mean. Like, you just have this with a mountain texture. This, I just kept it as a separate texturing thing. I probably also got a little lazy, so I was like, screw it. Just throw a texture on it. Now it's just, now it's a thing. Now it's special. Um, but yeah, we, we want to see some actual use of the geometry. Um, some height differences, things like that. Walid says, it's 3.30 a.m. Good night, guys. Man, you said good night about an hour ago. <laughs> but yeah, good night again, man. Uh... Belgian waffles, eh? All right, all right. Sadly, you can't put infinite trees. No, you can't. <laughs> you really can't. Uh, this is already a cut-down version, probably, <laughs> from the number of rocks and trees and objects. Uh, because I think the limit for stuff is like 3,000. You can put up to 3,000 things, and then the game engine is like, what are you doing? I don't like this. So, you know, there, there is that. Joe Brown says, gotta love it when he says, this was made a while ago, back in 2018, while still playing a game from 2003. I know, I know, it's true, it's true. Well, I don't know, it still, it still feels like a long time ago. I mean, back then, if you compare generals from 2018 to generals today, 
is actually a difference. I mean, the graphics look better now. They do, okay? You might be like, wait, how? The graphics haven't changed. But that's because, you know, you can apply NVIDIA effects and graphics features and things. Like, the textures, they just look good, man. When I zoom out, the textures don't go all quirky and weird. It looks smooth and steady and nice and, you know, anti-aliasing and all that stuff. That's something that you can do now. Um, the control bar, the one you're looking at right here, is, well, man-made by, well, yours truly. But it's still cool. It's nice. We've got a bigger uh, radar compared to before. If you look at old streams, and I have old streams, guys, and you see the traditional control bar, I look at that and I just go, ugh, I can't look at that anymore. <laughs> I just can't. Uh, so even though, yes, 2018 is a long time ago, back then we had so much less, really. Um, like, I mean, the fact that you can see, like, the player icons, like, Pablo's player icon is showing there, right? Like, and his cash per minute. It's so cool to have that, in my opinion, at least. And uh, we didn't have the cool maps that we have now, like, 2018. What did we have? It's just everything DEFCON. Back then, I think uh, the craziest thing that had just happened was uh, Gorge Drought, because everybody got obsessed with that map around then. Uh, let's see, was Gorge Drought? There was another map. Um... Lagoon. That was it. Lagoon. Everybody was obsessed with Lagoon. Now you barely see it um, because it's actually imbalanced. But Tournament Desert, Lagoon, and Gorge Drought. That was it. That was basically everything that was happening online. Man, some nice engagements here from Fury. Look at that. Look, you can see he's got a lot of power. And I can show you guys. He's got... 52 additional power. There we go. You know, how cool is that? I don't know. I think it's cool. I think it's good. Actually, I grew up playing this game since I was three. Since you were three. Damn, that is, uh, that is an early start to zero hour. But I only played mods such as Contra and Shockwave. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I can understand that. But recently, normal generals, I don't know, it's getting a bit of a resurgence and uh, I don't know. It's getting a bit more stable as well with Gen Patcher and things like that, which helps. Ahmed says, Pablo is huge. Yes, he is. But he is slowly dying, though. He's kind of stuck in this 2v1 here, and it's going to probably cost him the game. Kiyoshi says, Dr. Goldfish, make a map using only trains. Actually, Goldfish is planning to uh, enter the competition and create his own map. So it's going to be fun because I'm going to have a little fight with him where I say, dude, this is not balanced. And he'll say, yes, it is balanced. And then I, I can always pull the, well, let's see what the judges are going to say. <laughs> Uh. Lucas says, it's a good map. I don't know why it's not played often. I still remember, I think, in 2020, it was a free-for-all with points. Many experts with Jundi having 100,000 helixes. Yeah, I remember that match as well. I still remember it. Yeah, that was on this one as well. Um, one of the reasons why I don't really play this often in free-for-all tournaments is actually a bit of a sad reason, uh, which is that you need... Um, the reason is that I have something very sad to say, which is if I switch on my gen tool, you can see my FPS at the top left here. It ain't the most stable, okay? Um, and that is because this map has a lot of texture changes going on. And when you have a lot of texture changes going on, uh, it actually tanks the FPS. So the FPS is the yellow number there. Um, and as you can see, I'm on 60, which is pretty decent, right? Pretty decent. But this is like, I'm, I'm running on a new PC here with a new graphics card, okay? Like, my FPS compared to my previous PC is around 70% higher, okay? So most people, the other players, I can tell you, they're not on this number. They are probably on 35, maybe 40, 45, something like that. So yeah, it's a bit laggy, unfortunately. So that is one of the reasons I don't really use it that often in tournaments. Uh, which is a shame, because I really love it. I really love... Uh, wait, did I do the wrong thing? I did the wrong thing. Wait, this was 120. This one. I, there we go. Um, I really like the, the map. I like how it looks. But yeah, it's, it's a bit of a problem. Uh, I think if a map is a bit laggy, like how this one is, I don't think it will cost you any points in the World Builder uh, contest, unless it is significantly worse than this one, let's put it that way. Where it's like, okay, it's becoming unplayable because of the lag. But yeah.
Fury says he's on 45. Yeah, that's what I thought. 45 FPS, something like that. So I'm on 60 here. Mind you, I'm as an observer, I actually have worse FPS. That's because I can zoom out more, okay? So the game, how it works, when you're playing, you are at a standard zoom of something like this, and you are only seeing this portion of the map. Sometimes if you hover over the edge of a cliff, you'll see like a bunch of like black in the corner there because that part of the map isn't loaded. As an observer, with the zoom thing enabled, so this, camera height, so I have more zoom, you load the entire map. So you are literally destined to get more lag. So, you know, this is kind of like the worst condition for like, hey, can my PC handle zero hour? You observe this map with extra zoom. You know, I'm still on 60 FPS, so I'm quite happy with that, I'll be honest. Like, in the very beginning, if you see the initial free-for-all tournaments where I was, you know, doing this map, I sometimes had FPS that went as low as, like, 23. So, you know, I'm, I'm quite I'm quite happy reaching 60. But, yeah, it's it's unfortunately one of the things with the, the map. Uh, let's see what else you guys are saying. Do-do-do-do. Something about nickname and pictures. Uh oh uh, Traum says, Canada don't want to pay $30 for a 20-year-old game. Uh, yeah, but you can also, with the EA app, you can sign up for that monthly thing. Um, and I think, I'm not entirely sure, because I've never tested it, but I am maybe 80% sure that if you do the monthly thing, which is like one euro or two euro or three euro or dollars or whatever, um, and you install the game and then you use Genpatcher and then never open the EA app again, uh, you can play the game for as long as you want. I think. I'm not 100% sure, but I am pretty sure. Just as long as you launch the game with the shortcuts um, that are on your desktop created by Gen Patcher, Then you have nothing to worry about. I'm pretty sure. Again, asterisk there. Uh, alternatively, you just pay the few dollars a month. Uh, and realistically, after a few months, you might just get bored of the game or something. It can happen. So it's, uh, it's up to you in that sense. Uh, let's see. Leggy's bar showing the player in the cash XP is good. Thank you. Uh, Leggy, I will drive over you. Wait, I will drive you over with a train if you do that. That's that's fine. That's fine. I'm uh, I'm up for it. Let's do it. You know. Leggy, say tanks the same as tank general. <laughs> I can't stop hearing it. Uh, tanks, tanks. No, Goldfish has a good... Uh, when you donate on Goldfish's stream, it goes tanks, tanks, tanks. This is so good, man. Wait, oh yeah, Fury died. Yeah, poor Fury. Well, it's just Shift versus Pablo now. But, you know, look at it. You get nice battles on this map, right? It's pretty cool. Um, again, the army is kind of like having a bit of a hard time because of this oil derrick, because of this supply. Like, I would totally change that supply to like small supply piles, place them here. Maybe I will make a new version of this map. Screw it. Maybe I will. But probably after we'll build a contest, though. Probably. I bought this game once on DVD. And ever since, I got it for free and worked online. Yeah, if you have a CD or DVD and you can in actually install it, you still have a disk drive, then uh, yeah, you can still play online. It will still work fine. Uh, if all players have graphics cards around a 3060, do you think it would help with the lag? Um, no. Basically, the game is heavily... CPU limited, okay? CPU all the way. Let me tell you how much my graphics card is pulling. Uh, my graphics card is pulling 34% right now. 34% graphics card utilization. Uh, yes, I do have one of the new 4070s, but if you have done your uh, looking online, you know that the 4070 is actually quite a weak card, and I'm just using 38% of that sucker. My CPU is maxed out at 100% because the game is single-threaded, so, you know, we have eight cores and four cores and 12 cores, but the game can, at max, use one core. So it's like, yeah, you're, you're kind of stuck in that regard. So the game is just CPU limited all the way. And uh, a lot of people play on laptops because laptops have just gotten more, you know, convenient for people. And laptop CPUs are a lot weaker than desktop CPUs, or at least somewhat weaker. So, you know, that, that usually tends to be the thing, that you have a guy who's playing on his, I don't know, work laptop or school laptop or whatever laptop, uh, and it's just a simple thing that is meant for office works uh, that's not very powerful, but it's CPU all the way.
4070 isn't weak. It's just not as strong as a 3080 Ti or something. Yeah, but like, I don't know. It's, uh, it's Nvidia, man. Let's see. Pablo is uh, doing okay. or dealing some damage, but this army is still a nuisance. We do see composite armor here, so that's pretty nice here from Shift. Markar says, are there any games after this? Nah, man. I'm, uh, I'm done for the day. I'm pretty tired. Oh, my God. Look at that. Such a nice anthrax. Nice last second save there with the ammo. But yeah, you know, on this, uh, on this map, you can have some GGs and AI works and everything, so that's, that's nice. Uh, I'll make your guys and says when are the first maps going to be looked at that is going to be probably on Tuesday I get a feeling I think we're going to have quite a few map submissions already by then um, That's my guess So Tuesday I'll probably do uh, a stream and we'll check out the maps the first versions I know already a lot of people have signed up like we already saw let me let me check was it more than 10? Uh yeah, I think 11, 12. 12 people, I think, have signed up already, which is a lot. I think this time last year, we had, like, one person sign up on the first day, and now it's 12. So, uh, you know, we're going to break some records here, guys. I can tell you that. We're going to break some records. Pascal says, this game needs to be remastered. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Would be really nice. Uh, first few years I played Zero Hour, I needed a ventilator on my PC at all times to cool it down. Okay, that sounds fancy. I remember playing this game on a Pentium 800MHz CPU. 50-50, a crashed and loading screen, good times. Man, I remember playing this game with 256 megabytes of RAM. Okay, effing chat for me, okay? <laughs> uh, terrible. Those were the days, man. Those were the days. I remember when I was playing online, when I started, everybody would always start by screaming, lag, lag. And I'm like, man, there is no lag. Shut the hell up. It was only much later that I realized that my PC was slowing down the game for everybody. But I thought it was the normal speed. <laughs> oh, so good. But anyway, yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is Is Shock Arena, the map I made, and uh, these are all the maps that I wanted to show you all. So if you've been watching this entire stream, checking out all the advice, then I expect some very, very good maps from you guys, okay? Very, very good. Uh, so yes, if you didn't catch the beginning of the stream, uh, then go back to the beginning of the stream because you actually can see the announcement video, or you could just look at the announcement video on the Community Outpost YouTube channel. Uh, let me just tell these guys GG's here. GG's. Yeah, there we go. And uh, let's see if I can play some cool replay clips because there were some really nice moments. Um, but yeah, so now you guys know World Builder Contest 2023 has begun. Uh, and most importantly, if you do want to participate, which I suggest you do because fuck it, why not? It's fun. Um, to check out my stream that will be on uh, Sunday in the afternoon or, you know, morning or whatever. Early is what it comes down to. Um, and hopefully I will see you guys then. And, and... I'm going to make a map then, so join me. We'll do it together. It'll be fun. If you have any questions, you can ask. If you've never made maps before, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to show you exactly what to do. Uh, if you're an advanced guy, eh, maybe tune in a little later in the stream because we're going to start with the more basic stuff, uh, but we will cover some advanced things too. Most importantly, we're going to do whatever you guys ask. So if you're like, hey, Leggy, how do we do this texture thing? Hey, Leggy, how do we make these mountains? Or, you know, Leggy, why does my AI mess up? Or how do I use waypoints or any of those? things i'll be there and i can help out and we could talk about it and it'll be fine so uh yeah ladies and gentlemen hope you had a good time i sure did and uh i hope you're gonna join the world builder contest 2023 so yeah i will see you guys in just a few days so that's me signing off goodbye guys see ya